<laughs> hey, man, I'm in the demo. <laughs> Adam Curry, John C. Devorak. It's Sunday, August 18th, 2013. Time again for your Gitmo Nation Media Assassination Episode 540. This is No Agenda. Performing my duty as your official pasta turophile here in the Travis Heights hideout in the capital of the Drone Star State in the morning, everybody. I'm Adam Curry. And from northern Silicon Valley, <laughs> I'm John C. Dvorak. It's Craig Vaughn and Buzzkill in the morning. <laughs> Cease and desist, I say. Um, so, so, just a little so okay, so here's the problem we have for today's show. But we have uh, we have only one problem for today's show. <laughs> yeah, and that is that apparently somebody stole one of your uh, your 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 something. Salon magazine, I guess, right now is coming out with what exactly you were going to discuss today. No, 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 no. This is no what we discussed uh, on the, the previous episode. Oh well, what do you expect? Well, no. So I, I wasn't saying there was a problem. I'm just uh, uh, let me see. This is uh, Salon magazine. Jessalyn Raddick. Hello, Jessalyn. Welcome to the show. Uh, yeah, how, well, how about how about coughing up some uh, yeah, really you know, here you know, some, some of that salando you're making? <laughs> well, sure, then again. I'm sure <laughs> I'm sure it's just groovy. No, the the whole article is uh, essentially our entire analysis of the president saying that he signed whistleblower protection acts, uh, which is not a um, uh, an executive right, order, it was but bull crap. presidential policy directive number nineteen, and and that Snowden should have taken advantage of that, but those didn't go in, into effect until two hundred and seventy days after the president signed it, and a full three hundred and sixty five days, which would be, I think, in October of this year, when um, anyone uh, would know about when, it. Yeah, when it actually is, you know, when they have when they hang that notice up in the in the in the lunch room. Hey, are you thinking of blowing the whistle? Here's some things to consider. How do you do that? Do you think, you know what I mean? It's like, I'm sure they, they hang that up in the break room. Yeah, no, you've been in the lunch rooms. <laughs> yeah. they got all these things posted. People, yeah. everyone's, when you're really bored. <laughs> you're like, wow, what does this thing say? This what, what does that thing say? I've never paid attention to it. Well, here's the thing. You know, we moan and groan and bitch about uh, the, you know, the media, mainstream media at all levels. I would put Salon in there, kind of. And it's not alternative. No. And um, that they never do any of this. And so when they finally do it. Then we're bitching again. Yeah. <laughs> What's, wrong with, our material. What's wrong with this story? Something's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I think it's kind of good. You know, we're, we're seeing some, some interesting things taking place and questions being asked and. and I, I think in general, that's, uh, that's pretty good. It, I have a feeling it may be short lived. No, I'm not necessarily. They'll get, you get a lot of attention uh, by pointing out these things where people go, what? <laughs> what? what? They're, they're listening. They're reading our emails. They're doing their what? So um, I, I don't think it's true. I, I, don't, I, don't th th I don't think people are understanding the um, what it really means, what the, what the true impact of, of knowledge that the government is um, eavesdropping, uh, collecting, uh, it, if not listening in real time, certainly has the capability to go back and to retrieve communications. Uh, yeah, because I, I, you know, just talk to anyone who who knows about it and say, hey, have you changed your behavior at all? Are you more careful now about what you say to someone on the phone or in an email or on social media? And I'm pretty sure they'll say, yeah. Well, so this is a direct impact on you know your your right to freedom of speech. Totally. And it, I think it will affect people in very profound ways that that we can't even really think of at the moment. Well, Adam, I don't know about you, but I, I really don't think we're going to have too much trouble. We do have a good government, and uh, I do appreciate <laughs> the uh, Hello. All the work and effort they put into it every day. It's very hard being a government employee, Adam. There, there are actually, you know, if you look at like New York Times stories about about stuff, there are comments of people who talk just like that. He's <laughs> like, the government doesn't care about what you say to your brother-in-law, you fool. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Speaking of New York Times, um, I came across this uh, fantastic piece on NPR, which I was just like, what? Really? Right now? At this moment? Who's running that joint? The New York Times has moved all of its reporters onto corporate Gmail accounts. Unlike the free Gmail used by millions of people, corporate Gmail accounts cost money and have greater privacy protections. But that protection <laughs> is not complete. 
The move could leave Times reporters in a difficult legal situation if they are the subject of a government investigation. I'm like, how can you at this at this very particular moment? How can you, as an IT department, as an organization, as as a publication, even consider for a moment moving your corp journalistic email to to Google? It makes I mean, zero sense. Do you it's read hilarious, your, actually. And and uh, so this. I it, give you a clip of the day, damn. Well, for well, that. there's actually there's a. It was a pretty good report. I have to give it to NPR for this, although they didn't see the irony. I don't think. And here's a, um, a woman I think who works for, and this is part of the same piece who works for the um, Wall Street Journal, and it and explains again what the consequences are of people knowing that your government is you know possibly or certainly uh, no they're taking eavesdropping. all your emails. That, period. I find that all of this, including the AP revelations, contributed to a sense of nervousness, I guess, among sources. Jennifer Valentino DeVries is also at the Wall Street Journal. Even people who are not discussing particularly sensitive information with me um, will comment about the possibility of my emails and phone calls being tapped. And I think that's been disconcerting. It's in this context that the New York Times decided to outsource its email to Google. Before the switch, Times emails were stored on servers it owned. I mean, listen, listen to this. Is this reporter insane? I mean, how can how can you? This piece makes no sense to me. Where you have someone saying it's really a weird time to be doing this, and then the reporter comes back and says it's in this context that they did it. Now those messages are in Google's digital filing cabinet. I worry a lot about the outsourcing of email at a news organization. Julia Angwin. We only have two layers of protection, right? One is technological and one is legal. So certainly our lawyers at a news organization are going to fight to protect our emails. But if they don't fully control them technically, they can't mount a very good argument. Now, when I heard this, I, I thought, man, is, is, is this, this is really a hit piece on the Times. This is like the Wall Street Journal and NPR saying, hey, if you got something to say, don't go to the New York Times. You might be right. That might this may actually be a hit piece on the New York Times. It felt like it. Here's the Times response. The Times isn't the only media organization to outsource its email. And in a statement, it said it had discussed the legal issues involved here in detail. The company said it's confident its deal with Google, combined with precautions its journalists are now taking, has actually enhanced the protection of sensitive information. Right now, the Times believes hackers are actually a bigger security threat than <laughs> government investigations or yeah. gag orders. Fred Kate is the director for Applied Cybersecurity Research at Indiana University. He says a large email service provider like Google may very well have better security. Still, Kate says when it comes to mounting a legal defense against a leak investigation, the Times is making itself vulnerable. Yeah, it sounds like a hit piece to me, John. Sounds like a hit piece in a number of ways. And also, what is this notion that, yeah, Google may be protecting you against a Chinese hacker, but if they're just <laughs> giving everything to the government for them to, to scrutinize, what, what yeah. good is that? And this is the, this is the point that I, I'll just make it early on. Um, you know, people feel like they have no recourse. You know, there's nothing they can do um, about, you know, this these vast spying programs that have gone on. Of course, you know, ultimately you have to vote people out of office. That's, uh, you know, but that's, it, everyone's in on the game. So, you know, short of, you know, some kind of French Revolution that's going to be complicated, which, by the way, I'm not saying it wouldn't be an interesting idea. Uh, but the real way to do this, to get to... I don't to, know what you're talking about, Adam. <laughs> it's digitized. It's fact. I said it. The the, the real way to stop this, uh, and, and certainly slow it down, is you've got to, you've got to boycott Google. And all and all these services, you know, you've really just got to stop using them. And and I have a feeling, you know, and this is our ongoing conversation about how targeted advertising doesn't really work, and spam really is the way to go. And Google is in fact proving that with their changes to Gmail, where they're they're now actually spamming you. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, you know, the, they're making a lot of money um, providing services, not just to the U.S. government, but to uh, all governments. I'm sure that you know they have a a, a drive-by window. You know, hey, I want to get some info on this guy, that guy. Where are you from? Uh, Belarus. All right, no problem. 
They, they did this like three to a three hundred to a thousand dollars for searches that they allow. I mean, I th- this this could truly be, you know, a, 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 a big, real a, business a, model, a big part of the business model. And if you look at it, um, essentially, Google gets such a free pass from not just the government but from the media in so many different ways because uh, everyone wants to be bought by them essentially. Um. That you know, it, it's it's like a perfect it's like a perfect mix. You know, they they've got all the pieces that they need, and and everyone's just buying into it. The 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 people who can stop them is us. Just stop using their stuff. Stop it. Just don't use it. Yeah, and you, and you don't need it. I said I I did it. I do it once every three four months, and it's actually gotten pretty good now. I set up uh, Yacy search again, the peer to peer search engine, and now it's they've changed something so it kind of works without the uh, without your processor spiking. And again, I'm just amazed with the results. I'm like, oh, it's the results are better. They're just better because you're not getting all the stuff that's been gained and the Google is pushing ahead. And you know, that I've been reading about the um, the email marketers who are freaking out about uh, Google's Gmail change, where now they put stuff under the promotions tab. Yeah, including just, our newsletter. It, it, yeah, by Google the way, Google decides on its own. Yeah, including our newsletter, by the way. Yeah, our newsletter goes into the promotions tab. Anything that comes from Mailchimp goes into the promotions tab. There's just there's just no way about it. And all these, you know, these guys who you know, who and these marketing companies, they're all like, oh no, well, you know, it doesn't seem to be affecting us too much. We're not too worried about it. But meanwhile, uh, from what I understand, is that now Google is putting um, their own promotions at the top in the promotions tab. So there'll be like two e- the emails that you didn't really receive as emails, but they're promotions in your email promotions box. Oh, really? Yeah. Just it's like they do with disgusting. search. And it, it's, it's highlighted you know, a little in yellow. These, you know, as soon as I, if I, if I was a Google, I use Gmail for one thing and one thing only. Porn. Porn? I don't even know that there is porn on there. <laughs> I use it for one thing and one thing only. Sending you the clips. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Yeah, but, but the rest of the time, I won't use it, and I, I think it's dumb. I don't even think it's a very good product. Uh, you got to find somebody who does email professionally, and maybe you have to pay, you know, twenty bucks a year or whatever. But uh, mm. using these free email services is really. Dumb. I, I think I think the way to go is you've kind of got to do it more on a community based level, where you have you know one guy in the neighborhood or one kid who can kind of run a server and y'all pay like a buck a month and then you know the kids making a hundred bucks and you know and then he'll set it up and he'll maintain it for you know 20 families i think that's a much better idea than you know because you're still going to run into the the problem of centralized services not so much about to me you know the security aspect if you if you want something to be secure you know keep it in your head and even that's iffy if it's secure in there uh, you know, don't certainly don't put it on a computer. Don't put it online. It's gonna be it's gonna be vulnerable one way or the other. But if you want to be free, if you want to just be free of the slavery, then you know you've gotta you've gotta be on a smaller service and and not something that you know a thousand people is too much. Look, at, Google went out. I guess they went down or whatever. Yeah, I was actually on uh, line and I was uh, would. I use I I use DuckDuckGo for most of my searches, mm-hmm. uh, which is yeah, it's mediocre. It's okay, it's better than actually generally speaking for regular searches than Google is. But for image searches, which I need for various reasons, I I still revert back to Bing or Google because you can look stuff up by pictures. Mm-hmm. And that, so I'm on there and I click on it and it gives me a, the, some error message. Yeah. And and it, I, I should have taken a screenshot of it, I guess. But it's it's I knew the the service went down because you never get a message from Google like this. It says, "Oh, I don't know, we're down. Don't know why." But this was kind of a check an, back in in fifteen minutes. In fact, the they, they, time they said to check back in is when it came back up, which makes me wonder whether they just turned it off for the because the government asked them to for a while to make it look like they're being. I think that these services are being hit by our own government. It this is not not paranoia. This is I. They're they've been pushing and pushing and pushing the cyber war thing and mm-hmm. the and the and the Joint Chiefs and all the head guys who don't know anything like what's his name Dempsey with this little uh, Baker like tab uh, name tag uh, Dempsey's goes on and on and we played clips after clip after clip uh, how they're going to put they want to put billions of dollars into this cyber warfare you know kind of thing I think that this is the whole thing was a scam 
Did, now you're in the uh, kind of in the in the tech journalism milieu. What 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 is the story that came out of this? Have, have you noticed the meme, the story that everybody just repeated no, over what, and over what, again? What was it? The only thing I heard was Google went down for twenty minutes. Oh, okay, so um, if, Google it, <laughs> see what the story is, and, and I'll, I'll tell you what it is. Google goes down for five minutes. Forty percent of internet traffic goes away. And um, this yeah. has been repeated by everybody. Every respectable, quote unquote, uh, uh, tech journalistic outfit has repeated this. I'm like, well, who measures the internet? I'd like to know uh, where this forty uh, percent comes from. You know, it's the same thing. Like, how many people are killed in Syria? How many people are killed in Egypt? And it just keeps getting repeated. And then, it, you know, sometimes the number grows. So, what is being implied? in this tech journalism is that uh, Google is responsible for 40% of global internet traffic. I mean, really? Okay, let me find out who um, who measured that. Is there some department of internet traffic that I can talk to who uh, who measures this on a, on a timely basis? No, it's an outfit called Go Squared Engineering, and they posted a, a picture, a graph, and uh, and their claim here, Google's downtime caused a forty percent drop in glo global traffic, and th and everyone's pointing to them as the experts in internet traffic measurement. And all these guys do is they're like a a, a stats company. So yeah, it may be that uh, forty percent of uh, their customers who use their little stats bug dropped because of it, but they're not measuring, you know, uh, BitTorrent no, traffic peer to peer. It's a known fact that most of the uh, peer to peer file sharing takes up at least over fifty percent of the internet. So how could Google take up forty? It more, doesn't make any more sense. More importantly, why are people? Why are journalists accepting? Because it's a, it's a source that. At least it's a source. There are other sources. I, I There's this one woman who really does the best job of this, and she's out of UCLA, and she really knows what she's talking about. But you're doing the story. You're getting paid nothing because <laughs> yeah, writers exactly. don't get paid anything. And exactly. so you got to get the story done. In fact, if you're on the, one of those crappy like Mashable or VentureBeat or all these you know high uh, uh, turnover uh, – online publications you're supposed to do f three or four or five stories a day right so you might as well just uh, just roam around a bit say oh grab that's an interesting get, story grab, oh that's good let's run that let's copy and that and everybody else is using the same yeah. stats so you're yeah. good to go yeah approved way to go are you on uh, twit today yes i am oh crap why well, because you know this is going to come up, <laughs> I wanted to make a lot of fun of it. I, I can tell you what the conversation is going to be. Wow, did you see that Google is forty percent of the internet traffic? I don't think anybody that's on this panel would actually buy that. Uh, okay, you don't bring it up. We'll see what happens. Okay, right. if they throw it in, I'll let it go. I'll let it. I'll let it hang out there, <laughs> and then I'll drop the bomb. <laughs> you be. <laughs> <laughs> a JCD, what I do anyway. A JCD bunker buster, everybody. Stand back. Here it comes. <laughs> anyway, so, yeah, it's uh, and, and I'm, I'm really happy with, uh, with the big and by message. By the way, if Google has that much, that big of a number, that means they're this big, one of the world's biggest spammers. Well, you know what? You know what? If, if that is spam true. Spam also chews up half the Internet. Let me say something. If, and, if Let's just say that I'm a journalist, I'm a tech journalist, and I'm, you know, and this went to, you know, big mainstream publications. If this were true, if Google truly is responsible for 40% of uh, the traffic on the internet, then I demand that our government break that company up. It's it's that it should be broken up like AT and T, and we should split off the Gmail division and split off the Drive division and split uh, split off uh, the Spy division. Just it should be broken up. In fact, I think we should start driving for that, based upon this <laughs> bogative number. Google should be broken up. <laughs> Actually, there's a column there. Thank you. That's I'll be funny. I'll be writing that for my uh, market watch uh, <laughs> column, PC anyway. magazine, whatever. Yeah. yeah. All right. So talking about that sort of thing. Okay. So I'm watching. Uh, oh, by the way, just a quickie. I, I was watching the McLaughlin recording. Here's a quickie. Pl play the Clinton Chelsea clip real quick. Okay. 
Hello. Uh, the New York Times expose of the Clinton Foundation points in one direction. Chelsea Clinton is the new powerhouse taking over from her parents. Oh, yeah. Right. Oh, abso absolutely. And excuse so me, we, didn't we didn't we call that uh, months years ago, ago? Months ago. Have you seen? Have it you wasn't seen months Clinton? Ago. It, was a long, it was at least six months ago. Have you seen Clinton? Who? Bill. Have Chelsea? You, Bill. Oh, I my God. Seen him oh, my God. Oh, my God, John. I give. I put it in the book. Six months and he's dead. Well, yeah, but now we know we know Hillary's going to kill him. Keep him alive to at least so she can be the October surprise. Um, you mean the the the, the before the election? Yeah. She, no, she's going to have to. No, I think the strategy would be, be you've got to kill him early. And, no. Yeah, yes. No. Think about it for a second. No. You've got to get the sympathy. You, you need time to get Chelsea installed. You know, this is. I actually, you know, when I saw Clinton, and now that you know the the, the New York Times article, I'm thinking that was a setup with the Clintons. It was. It wasn't an expose. It was to set her up. And now, but Bill looks. He's on death's door. I know what this looks like. Yeah. No, I know what it looks like too. Um, you know where the teeth start he, protruding a little bit and everything starts to roll yeah, no, back? No, no, he's like the walking dead. Yeah. Uh, so I, this I, is a vegetarian diet for you. So you, if, uh, you, if you do six months, then um, you know the, you got to have mourning, you no. got to have the sympathy thing going on, and then you know she just kicks into high gear. It has man. to be. Let's take a look at the calendar. <laughs> if we're strategizing <laughs> this, we're going to have to take a look right, at the calendar. Uh, let's just let's just presume that we're in charge of Hillary's 2016 campaign, and we're sitting yeah, around the so table. She's, say, she's not winning um, because she start, started Hill. prematurely. Hey Hill, she, Hill, uh, we, uh, when do we, when do you want us to kill Bill? <laughs> Well, let's take a look at the calendar. Uh, so. Are you being Hillary now? <laughs> let's, yeah, I'm, uh, it, it, I'm, this would be Hillary. Yeah, of course. <laughs> well, let's see what we can do. Okay, so <laughs> we, the elections will convenient. be in November of 2014. So this has to be, I'm guessing, uh, this would have to be s within six months of the November elections in 2016. It can't be before that because the public will forget. All right, well, and, let's let's write this down. So you say... Yeah. It can't be before. This will be our Deadpool. No agenda. March, Deadpool. April. You say it can't be before May 2015 is what you're saying. Yeah. No. Now. 2016. Yeah. 2016. Uh, April. May. Okay. That's, so that's the deadline. It has to be after that. Okay. So I'm saying. I'm saying. I'll. I'll even go out on a limb. I'll say before 2015. I'll say it happens before 2015. Okay, but I'm me... really thinking it's happening this year. No, no, within well, six you're, months. You're, so, so they, uh, yeah, it, if it at some point the guy can't be kept going. I mean, I have to. I'm not going to argue that. And if you look at him and think he's going to be dead within the within the six month period from now, because he just looks terrible. By the way, I want to mention the people out there who donate or don't donate to the show. Nobody in any other form of media would discuss this ever. <laughs> not in Think this, about it. No, of course not. It's of a reasonable not. discussion to have in this world of spies. It's a very reasonable discussion to have, but nobody would, would ever do it. We're doing it. And the reason and why we fact, can do it is... Got, we, we go beyond doing it. We've been talking about this for a while. We're actually now doing a Deadpool. And we stake so. our reputation on it. <laughs> we take it one step further. And we always... It, it never fails. We're, we're very good. <laughs> okay, so, so you have him at six months. Well, let, you have well, him. well, hold on. Let me let me you put have this two clip. predictions. You say pre twenty fifteen because he just looks like he's going to drop. Yes. Well, and and I also not just because of that. I feel that he that it makes sense uh, for her to have the timing. Yeah, you just, no. you think? No, I mean we have to we have to produce. Uh, all of the hagiographies, we have to have the memorials. We have there's a lot of stuff that has to go on, and then it has to shift away from her. This stuff takes time. It takes time. Here's here's Bill in Africa, a hilarious report on the BBC, which winds up with him actually talking about uh, if he has it in him to do another campaign. Uh, also, but he's he, the um, the the hubris of what he's saying here is pretty funny. Population of the world continues to go up. People will take more things out of the ground. The problem is there's been too much corruption, and who got to do it? Who what what was done with the revenues? He's, so he's he's literally talking about stuff that he's been responsible for.
about who who's who's taking the stuff out of the ground and who get what's being done with the revenues. And I'm only too happy to try to clean that up. I go and give a speech about this in Nigeria every year to the people who are doing it a lot of times. <laughs> but people are still going to take that stuff out of the ground. So what we need to do is to set up systems that work better to do that. I would happily spend a lot of the rest of my life doing that because I think it's a huge threat if it's done wrong and a huge opportunity if it's done right. He's already talking about this a huge poor part of the rest of his life. So he already knows, you know, it's not that much left. I want to keep doing things that have real opportunities here. And I think this smallholder farmers making these people self-sustaining, increasing their incomes two and three. And By four the way, he's in fold. the video right now. He's uh, drinking water from a Procter and Gamble water purifier with the Procter and Gamble representative right there. And like for smallholder huh. farmers. And here it comes. Mike just saw a staggering number of the future's problems. You're very much in your post-presidency, but inevitably people still are asking whether there's still a bit of Washington still left in you, whether there's still one more race to run, and you know I have to ask that question. You can't. I, if I knew the answer, I wouldn't tell you. But you don't know? Happily, I could be honest. I don't know. So now, now what, is, what question is he actually answering here? Because the question is, do you have, do you have it in you for one more race? The guy didn't say, is Hillary going to run for president? He said, do you have it in you to run one more race? He said, I don't know. I don't know if I have it in me. No, Bill, you don't. I, look, I'm for whatever my wife wants to do. And so uh, I didn't know if I had one more race left on me last time, but I thought the president was getting the raw deal, and I was glad to try to help him. Mm -hmm. He didn't think yeah. he could do it last time. Now that could be well, that could be his way of saying Hillary, you got to pay me, <laughs> give me some of your cash, put it in my uh, uh, my initiative. Uh, but I'm totally on board with uh, with well, Chelsea being set up. That makes a I'm, lot of sense, and they're doing it now for a reason. Oh yeah, yeah. No, there's the, yeah. She's going to take over the whole thing. She's going to be the godfather. This this little Chelsea. She's probably worked at her parents or neglecting her. She got a good education. She went to like a boarding school like thing the whole life. She reminds and me a little bit of Marissa Meyer in in some weird way. She might well daughter Stanford, same kind of personality. Okay. All right, there you go. That makes sense. So you have a lot of that kind of thing going on. Uh, Stanford women, they have a certain reputation. Oh, really? Do tell. Well, there used to be an old saying that you know nine out of ten girls are pretty, and the tenth one goes to Stanford. That used to be one of the old sayings. But I went to Cal where they used to propagate the formula. Uh -huh. the, uh, <laughs> I, but you do see like a good-looking Stanford woman once in a while. Uh -huh. Anyway. Uh, I think Melissa Meyer is extremely sexy. You know I do. She's very pretty. She's very pretty. Um, so she seems to they seem like they're all connivers. She's in Vogue so, magazine this month. Yeah, I know she's getting some flag for that. And, but she, if and, you can be in Vogue, Vogue magazine... Uh, as a CEO, you know, people criticize. I say, fine. What she, difference is Why make? is she being criticized? Is she she, uh, she should be doing her job. <laughs> <you know? laughs> she is. She is doing her job. Stock is up. Employee numbers are down. <laughs> Perfect. Right there, she's firing people left yeah, what's and right. The, what's the problem? She's got the stacked, stacked ranking going yeah. on. And she's just getting rid of people, good whether work. they're any good or not. You know what? It's That's a lot. Perfect. Yeah, it's a lot of dead weight. How, how many how many sysadmins do you need to run that thing? Who knows? Hmm. Whatever they're not going to have any by the time they're done. I'm going to go put it, go add to the little our Deadpool th information here. I am going to pre this is this is the prediction. I'm going to predict that there will be a rumor or, or a gossip item or something will crop up in one of these 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 political rags that in fact when Clinton dies, mm -hmm. he will he was actually he actually he actually and I think he would be the one to propagate this. He actually died in the saddle. <laughs> and the Secret Service, they had to move the body. <laughs> oh, wow. All right. In the saddle. Um, what, rumored. Rumored in rumored, the saddle. Rumored. But, uh, but what kind of woman will it be? Hooker. <laughs> of course. What was I thinking? All right. All right, Neil, you can put that in there. I'm not going to dispute that. I think that's a, that's a fair assessment. And you're right; he's probably already he's, he already has the dead man switch to release that information. You know, yeah. once he doesn't hit the knob. And, <laughs> and the irony of that will be, and I think the the irony of 
Hillary managing to kill him. The irony to that dead man switch is that is the last slam he takes at Hillary. Exactly. The last And it actually may hurt her campaign. Hmm. How's that for a thing? Yeah, no, it's it's good. It's good. Put that all in the book. Put it all in the book. Now, did you want to go in? I'm sorry, because I kind of sidetracked you on your your Clinton Chelsea thing there. Do you want? No, that was all I wanted to point out was this that you know this little this one because I'm playing McLaughlin stuff. So I got McLaughlin. These guys are the worst. Except for it turns out that that and and we should remind listeners. I don't know what show it was. Was years ago. We had one of the producers of the McLaughlin Report right, on, right, right, who gave us the background. No, we didn't have on. him on. We we uh, no, I mean on. I'm sorry, on by on. I mean we had an email. Yeah. So uh, it's, almost, it's almost the same thing for this show because we don't bring guests on and we just discuss things, uh, but we do have access to a lot of information. Now, uh, so so to show you, just to show the public out there, this was on NPR. Or, I'm sorry, on PBS, so the uh, regular TV stuff. To show you how stupid <laughs> these people are. Or the producers have, or the writers. Or the writers, yes. But but this one was, a, I believe, was ad-libbed because he was flabbergasted. McLaughlin, I, you have to listen to this carefully because it's amazing that no, that a guy at this stature, this old, this been, been around the block, old dude, McLaughlin, could possibly think this way. But play the McLaughlin drugs one. Looks like crack cocaine and heroin ends. Will the use of those drugs go up? Brian Grimm. Well, that assumes that uh, the drug war is reducing uh, drug use. But our prisons, in fact, are filled with drugs. I, don't, I can't think of something that could represent a greater failure of, uh, of prohibition of drugs than the fact that we can't even keep them out of our prisons. What are you basing that on? Uh, there are tons of federal statistics that talk about federal that talk about drug use and they in, can't in keep prisons. drugs out of prison. Can't keep them out of prison. <laughs> what next? You're going to tell me they're having homosexual relationships in them prisons? <laughs> that can't be true. <laughs> what an idiot! <laughs> what? Well, how do they get it in? What? <laughs> what? Wow. That's pretty yeah. good. Now, you, you yeah. Know, I, do you have? Do you want to go into your second and third? Because I have something relatable to this. Well, you. Be- you can do that. These other two are the same kind of. Well, let's play them. Let's play them. Like, okay. Well, here's the second one. Now, this is just a little off topic from of just the humiliating McLaughlin, but this <laughs> yeah, is uh, which we do like to do. Is another guy Buchanan who was, was on the show, who was once been a, a potential president and is a supposed conservative who is an actual. I, I you always took this lightly that everyone th- thought he was a fascist. He is a fascist and has been proven week after week on this particular show. Here's his commentary about what Holder had to say. John, let me give you a statistic. I think we had something like 600,000 people in prisons and jails in around 1980. And since then, it has more than tripled. And that is one of the primary reasons you get these chronic criminals off the streets is why crime has dropped in New York enormously, but it's dropped in cities all over America. And you start opening up the prisons and we'll be right back to the liberal 19th. Well, we're uh, we're talking about uh, people who are are jailed for long periods of time for minor drug uh, uh, infractions. <laughs> you gotta love Eleanor. She actually is the only reasonable person in this particular debate. For which once, is just like for once, for once. And so here's the but but but, the but, but she's smoking the dope because what she's talking about. I saw this episode. What she's talking about is not not factually true. It's not like Holder said, "Oh, we're going to let everybody go." You know, this none of no. that. She's she's just smoke. She is literally smoking the the Holder dope. I well, I think she's literally smoking dope. Period. <laughs> but um, so there is the third one, which is the one that just just I I you cannot find this statistic because it doesn't exist some this is where i think the writers are sick of this guy because the show is highly highly written and i think one of them just said i've had it with this guy he's an idiot and i'm going to give him a little stat here and let's see what he does with it more as a health issue and not a not a Mm. criminal violation and frankly the states are leading the way on this because they can't afford to keep jailing these people it's too expensive uh, let me let me confront you with this how many crimes does the average drug addict commit according to a rand study the average addict commits eleven thousand crimes over a lifetime (laughs) chiefly robbery and burglary to support his or her individual eleven thousand 
each well, individual? Well, let's put them in rehab. The <laughs> well, average wait, addict. The where, average addict. 11,000 11, crimes. <laughs> no. He's commit that's a crime every day of his life. <laughs> there right. you are. So, so, so <laughs> get out of bed and put them in rehab. <laughs> there you are. I, I, it says it right on the prompter. <laughs> That's funny. Eleven thousand, and even Buchanan, who is like a Nazi, he says, "Wait a minute, let's do the math on this. That means every single day." Uh, hey, John, here you go. <laughs> That's good. Well deserved. Well played, sir. Well played. You set me up. I thought the first one would be it, but then now uh, you did it. Uh, good job. I want. I, I did want to say something because I've I've been interested in uh, you know, th this kind of this combination of uh, of things coming together, and I don't think enough journalists do stuff like this. But I figured I should do a drug buy on Silk Road, and uh, and I did, and it was a very very interesting process, you know, and because it it deals with anonymity, which may or may not be anonymous, because of course you're using the Tor browser, which we know is compromised. Uh, you're dealing with bitcoins. You're dealing with uh, separate encryption processes, but also um, the sheer amount and the marketing. Have you have you ever seen S the Silk Road, the, uh, the the drug no, website? No, I've never gone to it. What's uh, is it? Uh, can you get to it on a regular browser? No, to use no, no. You have is it SilkRoad.com? No, 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 no. So the uh, it's Silk Road blog slumping rgb dot onion whatever. Uh, and you, so yeah, first you have to install the Tor browser, which you to probably get, to even get to it. Yes, that's the whole point. Oh, so well, I, I can't go look at it. No, you can't look at it now. But this is the point. I don't think most tech journalists have even done this because you can see that there is there's a couple things going on. First of all, uh, people understand very well how to you know how to set things up, and you know, I use the uh, two proxies actually <laughs> just to make sure, like try and remove myself as much as possible. Um, and then you you, you got to use uh, your bitcoins, but you look at this site; it's like an it's like an eBay essentially, but much better. And and and, <laughs> much better. and you look at the and the and the front. Guess what'd you where'd you buy? Uh, illegal drugs. And the oh, you won't tell me. No, not on the show. No, it's probably. I'm guessing it's Adderall. No, no. Oh, okay, okay. No. My guess is no, no, no. I, I bought something really illegal that I've never done before. In fact, I intend on sampling every category, <laughs> every category of drugs on the Silk Road. Because uh -huh. yeah, well, how can you talk about this stuff if you don't do it? So you look at the pictures, and it's just like every it's like a mound of coke. With the guy's logo, a mound, of a, coke. No, a mound, and then there's like heroin, there's like you know, big brown globs of Let's powder. Take some street shots. Oh, I will. I certainly will. It's it's f fantastic. You just, it's like, oh my god, and you can search. You're like, what are you looking for? I don't know. I'm looking for. Uh, uh, actually, uh, I didn't. I looked for um, Haldol. There were some Haldol pills available. Oh yeah, here we go again. <laughs> I didn't buy those. This temptation of yours no, to no, try Haldol. No, 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 no. I'm not going to try this. I, I, I know enough from reliable sources. We're not going to do that. But then here's how it works. So you you buy um, you you purchase it, and then your bitcoins are deducted from. You first you have to put bitcoins into a, an account, and uh, you know on on the site, and then they're deducted. But they're in escrow, and uh, they're held in escrow until the um, the seller ships your uh, drugs, and he and he sends it through the U.S. mail, which is fantastic. And you know they have reviews, and they'll talk about you know oh his stealthiness was great. Apparently, you know there's like some you can take pride in how stealth you are at sending your drugs. Um, and then uh, when you receive them, then you finalize. Um, and you and that means that you say okay I got I got what I was said I would I would get and uh, you can release the escrow to the to the seller. Now if you do nothing after 17 days it'll automatically finalize or you can say hey I never received it and they actually have a resolution center uh, <laughs> they'll, they'll help you with PGP encrypted emails you can go back and forth. Um, it, it's it's really sophisticated and then you, know, you well that's bothersome. What, what do you think is who do you think is behind it? Well, um, uh, Sinaloa or the FBI? I, I think it's uh, it's completely sanctioned. It, it seems to be a great way to keep the economy going. You know, just and and just looking at the pictures with everyone's little logo in there. I mean, there's a lot of drugs out there. I mean, there's a lot, oh, yeah. a lot. And it's this is why you know the only problem for the government is the Bitcoin thing. I think that's where that's a little annoying. They love the fact that you know. 
big quantities of drugs are coming in and they're being distributed. And, hey, the U.S. Postal Service is doing this. And this can't be minor, John. This is the Silk Road. It's a big deal. And so how how is the shipments uh, made uh, anonymously? It doesn't make any sense. You can't do it. It's, no, no. You you you. Um, so they'll say, okay, please give me. You have to give your real name and your address. Um, but you, well, they're they're just developing a database of drug users. Yeah, but but yeah, of course. W- what's the problem? This, the, the U.S. government wants you to use drugs because it's good. The drug money comes to the banks. It floats to the economy. You know, I think I think that's pretty well established. You know, now we're even we're going to stop arresting people because we need more users. I, I make no. This is what our economy runs on: drug money and Google. Where else? And Apple, I guess. Where, where else is our... What else do we... Oh, and besides, you know, that the tanks and stuff that we kill people with. Yeah, we do a lot of munitions. Yeah, so we do a lot of that, which you can't buy on uh, on the Silk Road. No guns, no ammo, no nothing like that. I'm surprised there's not a Silk Road for uh, arms dealers. There, there may be. Yeah, there may be. There may be. But this, and this thing, it's... I was really surprised at, at how sophisticated... I thought... Yeah, I thought I was like, wow, you know, what will this be? But and you see the amount of, uh, you know, it's like Yelp. They've got reviews for for every. <laughs> yeah, you got. It's like, hey man, this <laughs> stuff was nasty. <laughs> yeah, there was some of that. <laughs> but uh, the, the, here's the lingo. Uh, F E. This was so good. Now that means finalize early. So that means that even before the guy has sent it off, you'll finalize early just because you give him props because he's you know he's a, he's because a, he's a good deal. So now let's get to let me look at this. So you so you you go to the Silk Road with you had to go through. Okay, first of all, it's a rigmarole. So you have to be hardcore needing drugs. No, it's not a rigmarole. You download the. Well, you Tor said browser. it was a. You got to download a different browser and you got to have Bitcoin. Oh, yeah. You got to have a Bitcoin account. That's not a rigmarole. I don't have a Bitcoin account. I'm not going to download. Let me some a, let me ask browser. you. Let me ask you a question. Is it? Uh, it's easier than. Going to the doctor, dealing with the insurance, getting a prescription, going to the pharmacy. No, no, no. Yeah, you once... go to one of those big meetups, and that's what they are. <laughs> meet a up. big giant marijuana <laughs> pot meetup. I'm not talking a... about. I'm talking and you about. Walk in I'm talking they, about they... pharmaceuticals like uh, Adderall and Vyvanse oh. and Ritalin and uh, all the all I'm, that stuff. That's a, that's a pain I'd... in the ass. This is easy. It took yeah. me 15 minutes. Yeah. Okay. Okay, but let me get back to it. All right. So you go, you go through this rigmarole and keeping the word, uh, and you get on this thing, and then you order some something, uh, drug X from these guys. Does the, who's this? Does this then get passed on to a supplier, who he ships it? He's the drug X yes. guy. Yeah. The, yes. The, the so it goes, so in other words, it goes. It's like eBay. The farm. It's like eBay. The, the The Silk Road is not selling anything. So They're not buy, shipping anything. Buy it now. Yeah, yeah. There's no bidding. It's definitely buy, buy it, now. it now. Yeah, there's so no buy it now, and yeah. some somebody ships it to you now. They are, are shipping illegally. Shipping. They're the real criminals. Oh yes, Man, criminals. They're shipping yeah. the drugs to you. Yes, through the and, U.S. And so there has system. to be a, a like a. This is a speakeasy like operation because so you have to have a special code or they're going to ship it as a package of of, of this is uh, this is this, no this is the stealthiness Sandy. thing this is the stealthiness and when I receive my package I'll be able to tell you what it means what how they package it yeah you know, you'll be receiving it like this <laughs> <laughs> no it's like <laughs> Mr. Adam Curry no Mr. Curry. <laughs> Yeah, I'll let you know. I'll let you know how how it works out. And I'll let you know what I tried after I try it. Okay. It's better not harm the show is all I know. <laughs> no drug using on this show. <laughs> I, I, I won't do it during the show. <laughs> <laughs> I promise you that. <laughs> hey, come You're on. After I, a Sunday show so you have a little recovery. Yeah. yeah but, yeah, I mean, I, I, can't re- I can't report on this stuff unless uh, unless I know what it is. 
And you know me. I've no, never I done understand anything. understand the theory. Look, one thing we know, I don't need See, to smoke man, weed. I'm all for that theory. I think it's fantastic. <laughs> we know I don't have to smoke weed. That's what that, We know I don't have to <laughs> test that. You've got plenty of experience there. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't live up to the hype. I can tell you that. Well, yeah. It's good for, you know, if, if, you, if you're dying, well, if you've got go cancer. Well, let's go right to the or... Gupta stuff. So Gupta has a huge special called Weed yes. that was done on CNN. Oh, yes, which and, they, we, they, we and it starts off. With this, the whole thing starts off with Gupta. Uh, there, there's some little girl. There's a secondary. I, I don't. I believe me. You think I've heard of this? There's a secondary drug besides THC and marijuana. It's called CDD or something like that. They just said they say it in the report. But the thing is, is this secondary drug, which some pot plants have more of than THC, and they, and this very doesn't have any sales. Hmm. And so they're trying to boost the sales of this stuff. And what they found is that. There was a g- little cute little girl who was having 300 epileptic seizures a week. She couldn't walk. She was just having nothing but problems. And they fi- and they, some research apparently out of Israel, which does all the pot research because we in the United States are precluded because of various agencies and otherwise from doing any research whatsoever. Thus, the doctors can come out and say, well, there's no evidence. Well, there's no <laughs> evidence in this country. Mm. Because nobody will do the research. So, uh, but the public puts up with this because they're idiots. So let's go to get this little girl. They, they, they got her this special pot that doesn't have, it has almost no THC, so she can't get stoned. Well, what's the it's point? Like, what's the point if it doesn't have the THC? It's got this other stuff in it which stops seizures. Oh, uh, I think, yeah, okay, I know about this story. Okay. Okay, and then apparently uh, pot plants have all kinds of medicinal uses. Uh, there's the discovering in... Uh, uh, Israel. Now, this reminds me a lot of the of the coke thing and the and coca coca leaves. They, you know, if you're in Peru, Bolivia, Ecuador, uh, you're at the airport. You go to the airport lounge. They got coca tea, and you you usually you know you take a bag and you make some tea, and you then you grab the rest of the bags and put it in your pocket. And then uh, you've got your coca <laughs> leaf. You put it in your pocket, John. Don't you have to put it in your butt? You, no, no, no. <laughs> what's they're tea bags. <laughs> I just wonder why you say you put it in your pocket. Uh, never mind. Keep going. You, you just get it. You just take a few <laughs> bags with you. So, because uh, everybody wants to have a little coca leaf tea. Oh, yeah. And uh, it's, it's you know, it's, it's, it's like tea. It's a little bit, it picks you up a little bit. Yeah, yeah. We know, we know about the coca leaves. There's a lot of we stuff. We know. We know you were in Peru. Yes, we know. We know. Cocaine. We know. Okay? Yeah. So there's a, uh, and I said the word okay after a sentence to stop you from talking, I guess. So the, uh, I would say that must be true with the marijuana plant. So let's play the clip uh, anyway. We'll play Gupta 1 on pot and get a little background. Been some great advances. As the sun was rising on the ancient city of Jerusalem, the final leg of our journey was just beginning. There have been some great advances here, and I'm proud of that, obviously. Dr. Boaz Lev is with Israel's Ministry of Health. Here, they have pioneered marijuana research. They were the first to isolate THC and CBD decades ago. And now the country's ministry licensed 10,000 patients to use marijuana medicinally and has approved more than a dozen studies to treat illnesses like PTSD, pain, Crohn's disease, even cancer. Nice. I like it. I especially like the, the music. Here we are in the Curry Dvorak Consulting Group Laboratories, where we've discovered that marijuana is really fantastic. It's good for you, even in Israel, where they smoke it a lot. So, um... CBD is that other chemical. So anyway, so the story goes on and on, and it was it's very promotional. They bring an old man out yeah. who's you know got the shakes, and they give him a, he smokes a, he's smoking a pipe. He says, ah, the shakes are gone, and all this sort of <laughs> shiver me timbers. So uh, you then we go then they start to talk <laughs> about the the real meat of the subject, which is this, and it's three different people they interview. First they go up to some head of some medical organization who's got the litany, the AMA litany. Oh, it's good for nothing. There's no proof. And then they, <laughs> somebody comes out, then they have the, the, the handsome-looking look, woman who says, oh, we, we can't study it, so that's why there's no proof. And then they blame this one organization. They bring some 
crazy sounding woman. Ah, that's not our problem. <laughs> and and then they finally go, yeah, yeah, well, here's the here's the little wrap up. <laughs> Bitch, look it up, it's science. This program at Sheba is well established. And experts say a teaching tool for using marijuana in other hospitals. Do you think this could happen in the United States? <laughs> I don't know that there's yet enough really concrete evidence of cannabis's benefit uh, that, that's satisfactory, at least in that context. I think it's going to come. But it could be slow going. The FDA has been great at approving studies, but National Institute of Drug Abuse has been really stonewalling and blocking any studies looking at therapeutic effects of cannabis because that's not their mandate. Their mandate is to look at the harms of drug use. It's very easy to blame an organization. I mean, Dr. Nora Volkoff, who is the director of NIDA, says they are not standing in the way. She claims they are not the only government institute that approves marijuana research. If you would come up with a grant that says, okay, this is going to be a treatment for... This is Arianna Huffington. It's horrible. ...drug addiction, then it would go to us. But if it's cancer, it goes to the Cancer Institute. If it is schizophrenia, it goes to NIMH. And so the institutes have a mission with certain diseases. What is clear, there are bureaucratic hoops that most researchers simply don't want to jump through. Neuroscientist Carl Hart... There are not many people studying marijuana. It's very difficult to get approval to study marijuana. What's nice about Israel is that the government is helping the research to happen. And it's research that could give hope to patients like Charlotte Figge. I made it. <laughs> mm. You know what this, uh, what this documentary did? Yeah? 1.2 million uh, viewers for CNN. But let me well, see. Let me the, see what the let me, public at large is see very the, interested in this. Well, let me see what. Yeah, but let me see what the demo was. Yeah, <laughs> hey, it's like man, <laughs> I'm in the demo. <laughs> if it's just, well, let me write that down. Hold on a second. Fifty three. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, if it's if they only got old people. You know, like uh, the over. I'm sure it was. I'm sure it was white based. I I'm bet sure it was... wasn't. I bet it wasn't. Oh. Well, the people that are that are going to make this all happen are the millennials, who uh, just think it's bullshit, right. generally speaking. And the the. I mean, I think many of the generations feel this bull crap, but they uh, they they get talked out of it by these these nuts. But it, you know, the, the real issue here that I think was made in this report is that there are obvious benefits and it's not being studied. So at all in the United States, it's almost as though we have, well, maybe they're like your thesis, which is now they don't want to legalize anything because the banks don't get to do any yeah, money. You, you, I mean, that, that'll only drive the price down. Why ruin it? You know, this, is a, this is a good deal for everybody. Can you say Mina, Arkansas? Come on, this is a good deal. Uh, like I know what your thesis is, and I, I'm not going to argue against it because the, the movie or documentary Cocaine Cowboys, which I recommend yep. everybody see, yep. essentially made that exact same point by showing all these banks that were just doing crazy business until they cracked down on coke in South Florida, and then they all went out of business just coincidentally. Yeah, it's and, a very interesting uh, document. And by the way, look at you know, look at who's running the FBI now. And HB, we, uh, that, that crappy Swiss bank that was, you know, just HS, slapped on HSBC, the hand for HSBC, who was HSBC. laundering hundreds of millions, more than a, over a billion in total. And it's just the cost of doing business. They get a little fine, you know. It's like, oh, we'll pay you know, whatever millions. We'll just we'll just pay, you know, whatever. No big deal. We'll pay pay that. We'll take care of it. Uh, but now, you know, the, the the former board member from HSBC is now running the FBI. He is now the director of the FBI. So, you know, hello. The first thing he does, he's like, all right, guys, I got to resign from the board here, but I got an idea. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to go into the FBI, and I'm going to set up this whole thing, talk to all the people around there, and I'm going to make sure that we get everyone. We're going to let some people out. No, we let some people out. We're not going to put. We're going to keep our users out of jail, essentially, and uh, we're going to our customers. Yeah, our customers. I'm sorry. I, do you think they call them customers or users? I wonder. Yeah, customers. customers. Uh, we're going to keep our customers out of jail, and uh, you know, we'll talk to uh, Zuck over there, Zucker at uh, at the CNNs at Time Warner, and uh, we'll see. Get this. We got to do something big, Zuck. Big, big, big. I know. We'll make Sanjay Gupta flip. And that that's 
feasible well, at what least. You can be, what you can, you, to back up your thesis, you could say that Sanjay Gupta has flipped and he's now promoting marijuana and is a, actually a booster. He's a marijuana booster. <laughs> and uh, so, which is, do, it, but it's not getting the job of legalization done. It's just getting the job of getting more customers. Right. That's what you could, you could make that argument. Yes. And, and uh, in the CNN, that was, pr that was a uh, story. I think I even printed it out. Uh, they ran a story about how, and this is bull, bull crap as far as I can tell, but they claim that the legalization of mar that marijuana – I'm not buying any of this, by the way. But that the claim is that marijuana uh, is 80 percent of all the drug cartels' uh, income, revenue. Hmm. And uh, Really? It seems like such an inefficient drug for, the, for that kind of revenue. Yes. I don't believe this because people can grow it. There's a million ways of getting it. It's yeah. not – yeah. But so I think that's bull. Uh, whatever the case is, they claim in the same article that between – then this is ridiculous if true, that because of Colorado and Washington, it will cost the Sinaloa – they only mention Sinaloa as though they're running things already. Of course, we've set that up. Mm. Uh, the Sinaloa drug cartel will lose in revenue $2.8 billion a year. Well, I would believe it. I don't believe these numbers. These numbers are too, this is like the 11,000 crimes. This is, <laughs> it doesn't, it, it just doesn't make sense that the, 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 if that market is that big, I mean, I can't, it, why is it that it has to be widespread? And these are not drug state, states you associate, Colorado a little bit in some parts, but Washington and Colorado aren't states you associate with heavy marijuana smoking mm. as you might in California. Mm. And, uh, if that kind of number from those two, and they're not populous, especially Colorado, there's two small states, essentially, 2.8 billion. What is California? I mean, now you'd have to say, well, maybe that's the reason that this, the marijuana initiative in California was was voted down because, I mean, it must be a $10 billion uh, state. It's, yeah, but I think I think that is very close to being true. And I you've got to see it. Yeah, you, Some guy gets a bag of pot. And, I mean, now, of course, this stuff is expensive. There's, there's, there's medical stuff. And, All right. Well, uh, okay. Okay. Stop. Let me let me ask you this. What is your cell phone bill every month? 30 bucks. All right. Uh, do you think that's typical, your cell phone bill? I think I have a good deal. Okay. Uh, that's 30 bucks a month. If you're smoking weed, times 10 that. Minimum. Because that's what you're going to be paying for weed. And think about how many people... Everyone who has a cell phone is basically a drug user. We all know that. Hello. This is you know, it, the cell phone business is is multi 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 billion dollars. Come on, John. Think logically about this. Everybody's doing it except you. Hello. Where you be? Get out of the house more. I have to work on the show. <laughs> all right. Enough of this uh, drug talk. Well, well, hold on a second. I'm done. Uh, before we, you're done, I'm going to look up something. What is uh, Verizon's, uh, uh, which is one of the major cell phone companies, what is Verizon's uh, a net income? I'm going to say it's net income. Well, let's look at it. So we just go sales. We only yeah. go sales. No, no, no. John, why even, why even do it that way? The revenue from Lipitor is $6 billion a year. Lipitor. One drug, $6 billion. Well, marijuana is one drug. That's right. One drug, and, and, so, they, and they're getting two point eight from two crummy states. Come on. Anyway, it's got no, it's, it's, these numbers are don't make sense to me. All right. All right. Okay, revenue for uh, Verizon is one hundred and eighteen billion. There you go. Thank you. My point is made. No, so, it's so not. times ten is a trillion. Well, that's just I, don't, I just don't think people are. I just don't think everybody has a cell phone. Not everybody's smoking dope. Oh, John. Okay, not just smoking. Okay. All right, never mind. Okay, fine. You, want, you know what? I, the, hello, McLaughlin Group calling. We'd like John on the show. <laughs> 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 hey, in the morning to you, John C. Dvorak. Yeah, uh-huh. In the morning to you, Adam, and uh, <clears throat> all the ships of sea, boots on the ground, feet in the air, subs in the water. <laughs> and the dames and knights out there. Yeah, and to our uh, human resources here in the chat room, no agenda show, uh, no, no agenda stream.com, no agenda 
chat.net and to our artists, of course. We had a new artist check in for the album art on the previous show, episode five three nine. Nazi art. Odman, which, uh, yes, with our, our fine uh, Russian uh, capitalist pig screaming uh, uh, host of RT. Very, uh, very happy to see that. And looking forward to more art today at noagendaartgenerator.com. And we have, we had, I think we got saved by, uh, by uh, uh, someone from Gitmo Lowlands today. Otherwise, it would have been a little bit of trouble on the show. Yeah, we had a, <coughs> excuse me. I don't know why I get congested. Uh, yeah, we sent Smoke some guys. weed. It'll clear it right up. It, that, it's not true. Um, yeah, we got uh, uh, saved by one donation, essentially. I don't know what why it dropped off so radically and, and kind of stayed that way. It dropped off after the... Uh, after the, the last show. <laughs> Maybe people just don't like what we're doing anymore. I think, no, I think we're still... We're, this is the time of year where you have your final the big vacations a lot of people take in August. I mean, France, France mm. is gone. Yes. I mean, the whole country's on vacation. But anyway, we do have two executive producers, one associate executive producer, and the executive producer from uh, the Ha at the Hague, the Hague Den Haag, in the ne- Netherlands, uh, Alexandru uh, Bersanu. Um, I've listened to the show for a long time. I always thought of donating. Always thought of donating. I kept, kept thinking about it, but never did. I don't know why. I just didn't. Please give me and all the others like me a big de-douching. Oh, absolutely. You've been de-douched. So he gave us a 1687, which is the year Newton published his Principia. The Principia being the law of gravity? No, it's, it was a book of, of, of it was Newtonian uh, physics book. I oh. think it's all, it's all his stuff is in there, or his main main thinkings. Maybe we should read this book. Maybe it seems like there's something to it. Maybe, if it got a 1687. And then on a social executive producer, the good old uh, Baron Greg Birch up there from Port Angeles was passing through town. So uh, we went to nice. dinner. And, oh, really? Uh, oh, cool. Uh, well, it's a night through town. You know, you and I both do this. If there's a knight, a baron especially, you, you, you know, we treat them with the kind of respect they deserve. So, uh, so he dropped off 200. So he'll be associate executive producer. And he dropped off a, one of the newest of the new... Canadian twenties, uh, okay. Plastic. It's a plastic bill. What? And plastic? it's got a bunch of. It's got a so complete one panel. It's complete see through. Hmm. It's transparent. It's a, like a piece of transparent lucite. And on the transparent part, there's two uh, holograms, and each of them have a hologram within a hologram. And then there's a little transparent note over on the left hand side of this solid plastic bill. Which is very smooth and 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 slippery, and the, and the, there's a little Canadian uh, leaf on the other side, and uh, it's very a weird. And it's got a little, it's got like a barcode, some sort of a weird barcode. I don't know what kind of it is on the one side. It's this very it's the strangest bill out there right at the moment. Interesting. And does it still have the Queen on it? Yeah, yeah, she's on there. She had, you know, the queen when she was about 32, she's on there. I'm looking at it. She looks like George Washington, actually. <laughs> look at her. Well, I didn't see. I don't have the bill with me, but let me look it on the... That's, so what, you, that's, you, that's, that's pretty interesting, this uh, the see-through thing. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, very strange. And, uh, you know, we, I, we'll talk about this on the break when we give the main donation uh, segment uh, a, a shout-out. They... Uh, and I, I forgot about this, but I forgot that they had shrunk the uh, euro to a small little bill. And uh, so the five euro note is a little bitty thing. The, the Canadians have not started doing this well, shit. Well, it's, the, the, it's always been that way. The uh, The euro notes are different. The, the, the different denominations have different no, sizes. No, but I have, I got some five, I got a five euro note that's twice as big as this one. Hmm. You just go there a lot so you don't notice the changes. But anyway, oh yeah, the, no, I've been there so often. You went to, you know, recently. Well, the, anyway, so the five euro note, which is about the size of I think what used to be a one ruble hmm. note, it, it, and the Russians were the ones that made these uh, bills uh, different sizes. I, as, far, as far as I remember, they're the, one of the first countries to do this, and they did it a long time ago. Hmm. And so these little bills, which I think are crazy because it makes the cash register a mess, but whatever. Uh, 
I think it's a reflection of the Russian economy because I, I was reading a, about these bills and they're saying, well, you know, don't get hundreds in, in Europe. Do, do not get a, a euro, 100 euro bill because nobody will take it. That's not and true. Then, that's not true. The 500 well, is the one that's tough. The 500. Well, no, the 500 nobody will take. But I'm telling I'm just reading a forum and they're bit. Right. But, but as you know, I go there a lot. So, yeah. That's not well, true. you go there all the time. So, anyway, the 100 euro. But, but what I'm trying to get to is that it's sounding especially in some of these countries, as though we're seeing a reflection of the old pre-Soviet collapse of the Soviet Union economy, where you got to be really careful about what kind of money you give right. people, and you can't right. use oh, certain yeah, yeah, cards, yeah, yeah. you can't do this, you can't do that, you have to pay cash, or you, or you have to use, that, like you said, the PIN card or nothing. I mean, what is this? This is bull crap. Let me ask you a it's, question about the uh, the Canadian thing with the see-through. Yeah. So can you, if you roll it up and you snort Coke with it, do you see the, the Coke going up, the, like up the tube? I guess you would. <laughs> it's 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 perfectly see through. It's like glass. Wow. Uh, yeah, I think you, the the way you would roll that. Though, I don't think you can make it so just you can. You know, no, it probably wouldn't work because you'd have to. Oh no, because it's only a small part. I get it. I get it. Yeah, it's only a little bit of it. Let me uh, let me just wrap this up. Um, so <clears throat> we uh, yeah, well, we will be thanking more people later. But thank you very much, Alexandru Bir- Bersanu. From The Hague, the seat of the Dutch government, by the way, who knows what he's doing, coming up with uh, such an insta-night, fantastic executive producership. Uh, it is, of course, a, a true uh, a true credit, and you can put that on uh, your business card, your, uh, your IMDB, or uh, your LinkedIn seems to work very well for people. And also thank you to uh, Baron Greg Birch um, for your associate executive producership here on the uh, No Agenda Show. Please help us out for Thursday. We'll be light. Dvorak.org. Slash N A. And of course, no matter what you do to help us, please propagate the formula. Our formula is this we go out, we hit people in the mouth. You know, you mentioned that uh, we uh, we do stuff for our knights and our barons and our our patrons. Uh, you know, Sir Gene, uh, uh, the Baron de Marriott, Sheriff of Texas, he's he's now moving into Austin, and uh, and so we had a, a bite to eat yesterday after the market. And uh, you know, anyway, I wind up saying, "Sure, I'll take, I'll drive you to the airport," because he's uh, going on whatever one of his trips. So I pick him up at his house. John, it's like it's like a. I mean, it, it, now I know that that he's handling me. This is, uh, is a house with no furniture. Ah, uh, <laughs> it's this, a giveaway. It's like no furniture and a lot of camera equipment. Uh, like, yeah, really? <laughs> click, 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 click. And here's where he got the drugs from Silk Road. <laughs> what do you want to do with it? What do you want to do with this this news? Oh, I don't know. Who gives a crap? Let him go. We're getting too much good material from him. I forgot to mention there is a um, – we had the peerage map. Uh, uh, speaking of our, our knights, barons, earls, etc., uh, with the protectorates is now uh, we have uh, a, a new uh, producer maintaining this for us, and you can find it at itm.im slash peers, and it's it's very well done. It's a it is a you know Google Map mashup. Itm.im slash peers. P e r s. I'm surprised you didn't know about this, John. You being the uh, the peerage office. Uh huh. Um, but it's uh, it's cool. You can see who owns what, uh, who's uh, who's in charge of which uh, which portion of uh, the universe, so that after the war we'll we'll know who to talk to. Yeah, no, it'd be perfect. We can round them up and uh, give them their areas. We get to take some government buildings and uh, put them in charge. <laughs> Uh, I just got to uh, let me do uh, two uh, fascistic things. First, uh, our president, his weekly show. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. Over the past few weeks, I've been visiting with Americans across the country to talk about what we need to do to secure a better bargain for the middle class. You know, this is really getting on my nerves. <laughs> this better, but because I'm, you know, I'm in the middle class. I presume I'm, I'm not poor. I'm certainly not rich. We've discussed this before. What defines well, are the middle class? You looking for a bargain? Well, I got one. We need to rebuild an economy that rewards hard work and responsibility. Okay, so l- let me just let me just get this straight. I am in the middle class. I'm part of a bargain that rewards hard work with something. And let me see what what will my life be like. This, by the way, wait, 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 wait. It rewards hard work with what? Uh, th- I think he said a better economy. Let me listen. Well, that again. doesn't help me. Well, let me listen. Middle class. 
We need to rebuild an economy that rewards hard work and responsibility. Oh, it just rewards. <laughs> it could be a sticker. <laughs> yeah, it could be a sticker. Let's find out, because he's talking to young people. Uh, I'm, I only have like 10 more seconds of this. And this is his pitch for uh, Obamacare. And uh, young people, you know, you got to go to uh, healthcare.gov and figure out, you know, where you have to buy your mandatory health care. Uh, but here's the reward, apparently, for working hard. An economy built firmly on the cornerstones of middle class life. Good jobs, a good education, a home of your own, a secure retirement, and quality affordable health care that's there when you need it. And then you can die. That's there when you need it. It sounds like it. <laughs> it's like, okay, let me just get my life here. So I'm going to work hard, uh, send kids to college, retire, die. You know, they there's a, some assumption, especially in the uh, administration that's running this, you know, not well-experienced group of people running the country, yeah. that, uh, that Americans are idiots. And... Uh, yeah. The idea is that the, the youngsters, the millennials, are all going to f- jump on board of an overpriced uh, scheme when they don't need expensive health care insurance. Well, they, they're, they're going to have to. It's it's going to be well. No, they, you can. You just they'll just take the fines. And um, mm, you think? Yeah, there, there, there's nothing but discussion about this. Well, I'd rather pay this penalty than pay this other thing, uh, which is twice. I, 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 I really don't. I really don't want to talk about Obamacare on our. Well, show. I'm just going to say they're going to yeah. not j- jump in and they're going to they're going to abuse it. Like any American would do. It's just like you can yeah. get there faster, but I'm going to charge you ten bucks. Uh, I'm going to give you a ticket for ten bucks, even though it's not going to go on your record. But you, can, but if you speed, that's what's going to happen. In Kansas, if you're speeding, uh, <laughs> stop. You're killing me. No, seriously. In Kansas, <laughs> if you're speeding, if you give the, I think I don't know if you give it to the cop or the court. You just give them a bunch of money, and then they say, okay, it's not on your record. Uh, it's like there's different fines. If you're an idiot, you you know, and you don't, or you're driving without insurance. Anyway, I'm just saying that, yeah. this, that these things don't work out with Americans if it, there's a, if there's a way around it. If you're in Martha's Vineyard, by the way, where the president is uh, is vacationing, and should you see him at your local uh, uh, fish snack stop, where you know he's, you always see these pictures of the president, you know, buying some fries or something, just say hi. Tell him I sent you. Here's uh, 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 Herr Bloomberg of New York City, uh, who has a, a solution for the public housing in uh, in New York, and I think he's probably talking to the uh, to the next mayor of the city. And it kind of gives you a feel of you know what uh, how the elites of the world and what is Bloomberg worth? Ten billion, maybe, maybe more. Yeah, he's worth quite a bit. a lot of money. Here's how he thinks about you citizens. And one of the things they would have a very difficult time in doing uh, is running the police department and keeping bringing crime down. And I saw the judge now wants to get involved in the New York City Housing Authority. Uh, and uh, you know that that is a dis- five percent of our population lives in NYCHA housing. Twenty percent of the crime is in NYCHA housing. Numbers like that, and we've just got to find some ways to keep bringing crime down there. And we have a whole group of police officers assigned to NYCHA housing. The people that live there, most of them, want more police protection. They want more people. If you have strangers walking in the halls of your apartment building, don't you want somebody to stop and say, who are you? Why are you here? Because the locks on these doors with so many people coming and going, you really can't. What we wanted to do you know, is swipe cards or any other security. Uh, we wanted uh, uh, the, what we really should have is fingerprinting to get in. And, of course, since lots of the, there's an allegation that some of these apartments aren't occupied by the people who originally have. So, uh, you know, if you're in the middle class and you get to work, send your kids to school, uh, retire and die. And if you're poor, you get fingerprinted. <laughs> like it or not. We should have fingerprinted those people. What are we thinking? Well, the guys would have really fit right in in the, uh, in the 30s Germany. Oh, I, I wish people really saw it. I, w- I wish they really could s- open their eyes and see what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> did you just did happen. you just do meh? <laughs> meh. Did you do a meh? I didn't do meh. I said ah, but you sounded like meh. <laughs> the, uh, like, meh is the same thing. So the 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 the, the F Russia uh, gay law thing continues. Uh, and and I actually have an email uh, that I that from one of our producers, which was kind of nice that I wanted to read. But I also, uh, the more I think about it, the you know the the reason why this is ongoing is I think it's to promote the 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 Winter Olympics. 
I didn't even know about the the Sochi Winter Olympics until this until this uh, gay law pro- cropped up. Did you? Yeah. You knew. I mean, I I really hadn't heard about it. Now it's you know, just here over and over again. Oh, the, did you know it was Sochi? That that's where it is. Did you, did you, no. See, no. I just knew it was in Russia. You learned something, right? Well, I wasn't going to go there anyway. No, but uh, you, the whole point is to watch it on television. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a big promotional deal now. I, you know, okay. If you yeah. want to go in that direction, I got two clips. Can I? Okay. I'll read my. Uh, yeah, I'll, just, no, I'll read my email later. Go ahead. You can you can pull back, uh, but. This this is getting on my nerves. What you just said. Um, I'll play the other one later. But I just want to play. This was on ABC Network. Believe it or not, it it was a story about a Canadian. This is a, a, the Trader Joe's clip. WTF? It says this was on network TV. A story about some Canadian who was coming down to the United States to get to buy from Trader Joe's. And take the goods up north and sell them, resell them to the Canadians, because God knows there's nothing as high quality and, and demand <laughs> and, and high tra- demand for the crap Joe's. they sell at Trader Joe's to yuppies. Now to the battle between Trader Joe's and that customer buying carts full of groceries and then driving them across the border to sell in his own store. Trader Joe's not happy tonight. Here's ABC's Rena Ninen. Michael Hallett says his fellow Canadians love Trader Joe products. So the only way you can get a decent cracker in Canada is to go to Trader Joe's. Hard to believe, but Hallett drives nearly 80 miles from Canada across the border to Washington State. He says spending $22,000 a month on Trader Joe products, then turning around and reselling them at his Pirate Joe's, fully acknowledging it's all unauthorized, unaffiliated. The real Trader Joe's is now suing to stop him from selling and also for damages, a result of trademark infringement, false endorsements, false advertising, and other allegations. There are more than 390 Trader Joe's across America in more than 30 states, 14 stores in Washington alone. Mm-hmm. And while Hallett says he only makes about $2 on each item, he now has to go further to get the products. There was a heat wave in California. I tried the L.A. run, uh, and that didn't go very well, so we, we lost a bunch of chocolate. The store sign, ironically, has lost its P. All right, can I stop? Because I think your point is that uh, they're basically doing an ad for Trader Joe's. Yeah. Okay. Well, I just I just Googled around while that was uh, while that was running, and uh, here's more ABC. Oh fuck! I'm gonna fucking add. Uh, forget about it. I won't play it. Uh, rumors fly Trader Joe's may replace Shapes Gym in Florida. I mean, there's a big buy. They did a media buy, and they're yeah, rolling huge. it out. Yeah, but they're rolling they it out. They, it's one of these deals that you have to do now because, yeah. oh, you know, these media people, you know, they got more targeted. You know, we need some stories. Yeah. I mean, we'll give you the money, but we'd like to have a, you know, if you could do a feature. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, we can do a feature. We have to do it on a Sunday show uh, or weekend. Uh, ABC, you don't, yeah. ABC News weekend, that'd be okay? You should, well, save, you should save this story for the, uh, for the donation segment. You, you're popping too early here, bro. I got another one. And uh, so, they, so they do. I bet. They do this. You have to play the whole thing because there's another little gem in this thing. Whereas they they're gonna, uh, it, it's it's obviously fixed. It's a it's a, they, this is paid for editorial, and this is the problem. that I don't understand why the people that listen to our show don't appreciate this more. What we do, which is none of this crap. Although we're giving a plug to Trader Joe's at the same time, we're telling you what Trader Joe's used to be a pretty cool chain when they were three stores. Now it stinks. But anyway, finish this off and then I'll, you'll get the gem at the end. P, now reading Irate Joe's, which Hallett says sums up his own frustrations. If they said they were opening a store in Vancouver tomorrow or, or this year or next yeah. year, I'd, I'd <laughs> there <close> it is. <laughs> Trader Joe's is not commenting. The other store owner saying he wants to start a knockoff McDonald's next, David. Oh, oh right. yeah, because <laughs> heaven forbid there's not enough McDonald's. We need more McDonald's world. advertising. Oh, nice. They nice. threw a quickie for McDonald's, gave yeah. it in there, which yeah. is also an ad. That was actually a make good, I think. They messed the up. The McDonald's yeah. probably was. <laughs> they messed up for an one ad. Of their... <laughs> they cut off the ending of an ad somewhere, like, ah, oh, we'll, we'll make it up to you. Don't worry about yeah, it. Yeah, we'll throw it in editorial. It's worth more than yeah, it's, it's worth oh, a lot yeah. more. Uh, so I got an email here from Brian, producer Brian. Adam, um, on episode 536, while wearing a man dress, you shared your analysis of what is commonly referred to as the Russian anti gay law. 
Prior to hearing your take, I did find the mainstream coverage of this law to be curious, mainly because in the coverage by English-speaking media, there was an almost universal omission of the word children. That being said, I generally accepted what was reported by English-language mainstream alternative and LGBT-specific media to be accurate. With that in mind, after hearing your analysis, as a gay man, I began extensively researching and analyzing Russian Federation law N135FZ in hopes of debunking your analysis. This research project has not been easy, even with an extensive background in both journalism and politics. Obtaining accurately translated versions of the essential information was difficult, to say the least, because no English language news media outlet or NGO made these documents available to the viewer or reader. Because of my yearning to debunk your analysis, I was able to obtain a plethora of Russian language documents from Kremlin State Duma, the Russian Federation Council, and the Supreme Court of Russian Federation. I utilize best-in-class translation tools in order to compile accurate versions of these documents in English. I will point out, by the way, that we just asked our producers, we have many Russian producers to translate it for us, and they all kind of came back with the same thing. That's how we did it. I mean, we didn't have to do too much uh, work. We, we just got a great podcast. Uh, so, um... Oh. Reach, my friend, reach. Oh, shoot. What happened? Oh, damn. What? Well, somehow, the connection lost to my trackpad. Okay, we're back here. I anticipated my... Sorry. I anticipated my final analysis to be complete soon, but given the increased coverage of this topic, I'm sharing with you the following translated documents, etc., 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 um, following an extensive review of the text of the legislation, the changes the legislation has made to both Russian Federation law and Code of Administrative Offenses... Prior to Russian Federation Supreme Court decisions and LGBT rights granted to Russian Federation citizens that the United States doesn't grant LGBT citizens. Interesting. You hear that? The Russian Federation grants more rights to LGBT citizens than the United States. Ah. I have unequivocally concluded that the comments by English-speaking Russian, non-Russian public figures and the global English-speaking media are absolutely false and, frankly, lies. Your analysis is completely accurate. And this is a sh shock to anybody? I like the fact that he has an extensive background in uh, journalism and politics, uh, is gay, and was like, screw you, Curry. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get to the bottom of this. And so we had the link to his analysis in, uh, in the show notes. Um, I thought that was nice. Another convert. <laughs> Send pictures next time, big boy. <laughs> Hey, well, yes, indeed. Yeah, but we get a lot of this stuff, you know. And we got, uh, I think, some Russian girl, Sheena, who sent an email. And she's really up. She's in a really long email. And, you know, she's like, uh, it was titled, Parody, Please, would, m would Be Much Appreciated. Oh, yeah, I got that, too. Oh, you got that, too? Yeah. Like, you know. It's a big, long email. Yeah, it's like, you know, know Russia Today is good. The horrible Skype connection is, is because they're researchers and journalists. And, like, Sheena. Did, do you understand uh, the word irony? Do they not have this in Russia? Irony, John? Is that is that, are, is that what we're missing somewhere? They have. Uh, uh, they're a little weak on sarcasm. Okay, sarcasm. Maybe that's and it. they're that's a little the irony. Uh, I'm thinking irony is really a tough one because you have this theory. You should bring it up again. That Latins no la uh, no Latins do not understand irony at all. Yeah. No. So you can't be ironic. No, no, they, uh, they take everything the, the, very seriously. So you get hung. This is what <laughs> the ironic in Mexico is does does not work. No. <laughs> uh, and in fact, sarcasm probably doesn't either. Yeah. Um, but I, I, the Russians in irony. I don't know. It's hard to say because they're so serious. Did JC Buzzkill Jr. has this weird theory that he came up with? It was about I don't know five or six months ago. He says you know the great Russian writers. There's all, all these guys. He's totally convinced that the culture, the Russian culture, has been toxically damaged by yeah. the great Russian writers. Oh. He says those books will make anybody depressed. They're so well written. You know, Tolstoy, Dostoevsky, Solzhenitsyn, these people. Uh, it's all very dark, grim, horrible, as opposed to our stuff, which has a formula where there's a happy ending. <laughs> <laughs> or we test market four different endings, and then we decide what we're going to put in. That too. 
But whatever the case is, generally speaking, it's a happy are, are, ending. Are you recommending a particular work by Tolstoy that uh, no, our audience no, can would, get depressed I'm actually, by? <laughs> I'm actually in a, I've read a lot of Russian literature. Bulgakov is one of my favorite writers. And there's a book called We by Zamyatin, which everyone should read. It's a very interesting Yes. Book. No, I've, I've, we, uh, there's is even an updated, I think there's even an updated translated extraction version or something of We. Let me see. I have it. Somewhere. Well, whatever the case is, uh, I would I actually buy into this and I would say that the Russian people have to stop reading their depressing writers it's ruining them <laughs> what do you recommend uh, the the Re russian uh, all of them do not read them no no but they, they they like reading so they should read something can we give them an oh, alternative I think arthur haley a hotel roots? these roots? kinds of things they should be reading roots uh is that our, no? Who am I thinking of? I'm thinking. Oh, that's of Alex. Pop, right? That's Alex Haley. I'm sorry. Alex Haley is what you're thinking. I'm thinking Arthur Haley. Arthur Haley. Yeah. Uh, you want Arthur Haley? You want American movies? Uh, uh, Sleepless in Seattle. Boom. Winner. Nephron. Uh, uh, that Nephron, kind of Nephron, thing. Nephron. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Fifty Shades of Grey. I think the Russians should all read that. <laughs> and by the way, it's not about your weather. <laughs> Just letting you know. Uh, uh, I read We, and I found it to be incredibly challenging. Why? It's pretty it, straightforward. No, I, well, I about people who actually uh, transform themselves in a in a so in a in a kind of a fascistic socialist state. I'm going to give some uh, some uh, some tips for our Russian listeners as well. Uh, I would. I'm just looking at my Kindle here. I would rec recommend. Uh, here we go. Fifty Sight track twenty thirteen no. by John C. Dvorak. Fifty that. fifty relatives worse than yours. That's a fantastic <laughs> book. I think you'll re <laughs> really enjoy that. Uh, I would say women on the verge of a nervous breakdown. I think that's something that you might enjoy. How about the man who mistook his wife for a hat? That's supposed <laughs> to be quite good. <laughs> who wrote that? <laughs> no, it's, it's about people who have that the facial blindness. <laughs> Yeah, that's, it's the, is that a new one? Is that a new? A no, it's been out. It was out a, a couple years literary? ago. It's I like very it. Very popular. I like it. I like it. Um, Jen Saki, spelled P S A K I. Uh, we've had our eye on this girl for uh, for a while now, and uh, we, I guess we she wasn't really that much in the public eye when she was running the uh, the press bus for uh, then candidate uh, Obama senator or candidate to be president she's now running the state department and uh she's uh she has no soul she's ginger um she's ginger with freckles uh, cute though if you if you know she could if she lost 10 pounds she could be she has model i don't know how tall she is she has model I think qualities. if she lost 10 pounds and was in leather you'd have something she's got that kind of she's got a total kind of that style <laughs> john you astound me <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes, in leather. That would do it. Um, but she, I got to say, the girl is good. Here she is uh, on the, uh, the the Jake Tapper CNN uh, show. And she, and this is, if you, if you're planning on being in, uh, in public relations, which is pretty much politics, here's how you do it. How to not answer a question. Lesson one. The U.S. has provided tens of billions in aid to the Egyptian military over the years, mostly in the form of assets, weapons, and ammunition and the like. Mm -hmm. I guess the big question right now, as the world watches, is for the Americans, are supplies that the U.S. has given Egypt now being used to kill civilians in the street? This is a, an excellent question, wouldn't you say, John? Yeah, I bet I can see you skirting it. Well, uh, Jake, first let me say that what's happening on the ground in Egypt, what we've seen over the past couple of days is deplorable, is horrific. There are not enough adjectives to describe it. And you no, no, no. How about bogative? Throw that one in. You've heard the president and the secretary describe it in that way as well. We're obviously looking very closely at our broad relationship with Egypt. You can't have business as usual when hundreds of civilians are being killed in the street. But we have a broad, enduring partnership and strategic relationship with Egypt that's been going on for decades. So that's why uh, we're doing this review very carefully. We've taken some steps to uh, cut off certain forms of aid, uh, but we're continuing to review day by day. Now, the excellent question, because uh, she, she answered something completely different. Yeah. And uh, Jake's going to try it again. But are American <laughs> munitions that were given by the U.S. <laughs> to Egypt, are they actually tools of slaughter? Tools. And do we know that one? To write this down, John. Tools of slaughter. <laughs> Love it. Way or the other. 
Well, Jake, obviously we're watching every event that's happening on the ground very closely. And regardless of uh, where these tools are from, uh, cool. this is horrific what is happening to <laughs> civilians on the ground. Uh, and it certainly is not acceptable to the president, to the secretary of state, to anybody in the administration. Uh, and we are evaluating and reviewing the events that are happening on the ground and the steps being taken by the interim government uh, every single day. I also like civilians on the ground. That's also good. These are these are great terms you should just use. Don't talk about people, you know, citizens, human beings. Just talk about civilians on the ground. So we went on vacation uh, to the south of France, and the civilians on the ground there, they're great. I should use my tools of slaughter on them. So she doesn't answer the question. S skillfully done. That's why, luckily, we have Matt from uh, Reuters, uh, who sits there in uh, when she's up on her little podium, and he just he just gets right down to it. He sets her up, which I really like, and then he just this, he spanks her now, spanks her right on her leather chaps. Both are important. But the question is, are you confident that the policy that you're pursu pursuing will produce the desired results? Well, we can't look into the future, Matt. We evaluate every day what the appropriate steps and are. And you believe that your well, that, that, that what you're doing thus, what you ha are doing now and have done to this day is appropriate and, 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 and adequate to bring about the goal that you say. Set up. Well, again, the, reaching the goal is up to the Egyptian people to reach. We can't do it on their behalf. I understand, behalf. but to encourage them to get there. Yes, encouraging what's, them. What's been done thus far is... is we believe we've put some constructive steps forward, some constructive ideas. It's, it's up effective. to them to take the next step. All right, steps. and then my last one, and I will, will, will stop, I mm -hmm. promise, after this. Do you think, is the administration confident that the steps, that the policy that you have pursued thus far in Egypt and also in Syria mm -hmm. are worthy of a president who not so long ago won the Nobel Peace Prize? <laughs> Yes, Matt. You do. Arshan. <laughs> you should have seen the look on her face. Uh, it was a setup. That was a good one. <laughs> hey, I'm going to sit on your head until it cracks open, Matt. That was fantastic. So I have been thinking about uh, about this, about Egypt, and I looked at our, our two actors, McCain and Lieberman. And um, Lieberman? Yeah, Lieberman. Is no, he still I'm not, in the picture? Uh, was it Lieberman or... Lindsey Graham, probably. Graham. I'm sorry, Graham, not Lieberman. Graham. Thank you for correcting me. And they were on opposite sides. Um, McCain is like, yeah, no, we, we got to call it a coup. We got to stop the aid. And on the other hand, we have uh, Graham saying, no, 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 no. Oh, I wonder what... But, what... Well, it changed. Yes, it changed for a reason, though. Yeah, the, uh, the reason is um, the APAC, and this is uh, to your point that you made on the last show, the American-Israeli Political Action Committee, they came out and said, we should not cut off aid to Egypt. And that's when Graham went, oh, oh, whoops, let me just change. Oh, uh, here we go. I'm on board now with McCain. I'm saying the same thing. And this is very, very critical how this um, this aid now, thing? Now, wait, wait! You're, you're confused. I, 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 I did it the wrong way around, didn't I? Or something? You said. Let me just reiterate what you may have no, said. I, said, I think I think over. I said it the wrong. Yeah, I think I said it the wrong way around. Uh, you said that McCain is against aid, uh, giving any more aid no, to Egypt yeah. and and Lieber and Lieberman. You said, but you meant Lindsey Graham is all for it because of APAC. Yes, that's what you said. But what's the what? Now let's start. Let me what start over it? again. Yes, please. I had to write down. <laughs> I had to. I had to write down my uh, my notes. A okay, so Lieberman want. Yeah, no, I said. I said, it said Lieberman no, I said, again. No, it is Lieberman. It's not Graham. Oh, so Lieberman's in the picture. Lieberman's in the picture. All right. As part of APAC. And then oh, okay, so he's got to do that, something. With so the so time. he so he called Graham. There we go. Okay, now I got it. I got it straight now. So when APAC said no, we ha um, you know what? Let me just forget this. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm I'm confused. Well, I, let me before you drop it completely. Let me just say that if APAC says that we should be giving continue aid to Egypt, that means my thesis that Mossad that, is that, behind this. That whole thing. that was the that was the ultimate point of what I was saying. But now I'm con you confuse me with Lieberman and uh, and Graham, and I'm and you know now I'm like scouring through my notes, and I do see that 
uh, former Connecticut Senator Joe Lieberman said he disagreed with McCain. And then APAC said, hold on a second, we agree with McCain. Oh, they, they, so they don't they don't want aid. Uh, no, uh, no, I you know what? this is funny. I've never seen you break down like this. Yeah, it's I don't you, know. there's something there's something you you lost your train of thought. Yeah, but, and but now I'm like desperately trying to read through a hundred thousand words, and I just don't, yeah, I don't you know, think we I can, can move it to it. Thursday. I don't think I can get. Oh, you to may it. actually re- recover before the show's over. Uh, no, I, a, I, I, I think the hell doll kicked in. I don't. <laughs> tell you, this I don't know, Silk know, Road know, thing isn't helping. <laughs> um, no, okay. The ultimate. No, Ult- forget McCain, Lieberman. Forget everybody else. The fact that APAC said uh, we do not want to cut off aid is the important thing. Okay. And the aid, uh, it's that is uh, that's ultimately what I wanted to come back to. Well, it, let's face reality; they didn't want the Muslim Brotherhood running. Yes, that country. exactly, exactly. And so they're the ones behind this. There's which, no question. Which the, which the president calls the other guys. Yeah, he no. doesn't. He, I don't think he's in that speech he did. I didn't clip it or anything. I don't think he once said Muslim Brotherhood. He just called the other people the the opposition. Well, he can't because uh, that woman that's in his cabinet, the girlfriend or the girlfriend Uma. of Hillary, Uma, Uma. Thurman. Uh, <laughs> Uma Habedin. Yeah. And uh, she is, uh, a, you know, connected to the Muslim Brotherhood. And I think the whole place is plagued with these people. And Obama just listens to them. I don't know. He just he doesn't want to say anything bad about them. Okay. I think that uh, where I got confused, I think McCain is the one that flip-flopped. Oh, yeah, that could be. But he only does that for some kind of cheap extortion or something. He didn't get a, you know, he, he's lining his pockets for the future when he gets out of public office. So he's going to live to be 90, maybe 100. <laughs> you think? <laughs> his mom's still alive. As old as that guy is, his mom really? is still alive. Wow, how old is she? 90 plus 99 98 something like that well i plan on being 98 and she's still yeah but she's cognizant she's not like a dumb old 99 no i'm not planning on being a dumb 99 well, either you can plan whatever you want yeah you're in texas 106 degrees that'll it's you'll not be, it's you you'll know, be a piece of shoe leather by the yesterday time has been a beautiful 88 degrees nice and cool nice little breeze it's been fantastic we had a beautiful rainstorm two days ago Oh, did you catch the water in a bucket? No, but it's Wasted. it's it's been fantastic here. This is going to be good. The, the global cooling is doing its doing its job well. So play just to take a break here. Play bladder pill. Okay. And by the way, I apologize for that. I I just completely I lost it there. That doesn't happen often. Special moment, and I need to run off to the bathroom. I'm fed up with always having to put my bladder's needs ahead of my daughter. <laughs> so wow. today, I'm finally talking to my doctor about overactive bladder symptoms. Know that gotta go feeling? Ask your doctor about prescription Toviaz. One Toviaz pill a day significantly reduces sudden urges and accidents for 24 hours. If you have certain stomach problems or glaucoma or cannot empty your bladder, you should not take Toviaz. Get emergency medical help right away if your face, lips, throat, or tongue swells. Toviaz can cause blurred vision, dizziness, drowsiness, and decreased sweating. Do not drive, operate machinery, or do unsafe tasks until you know how Toviaz affects you. The <laughs> most common side effects are dry mouth and constipation. Talk to your doctor about Toviaz. Can I get that on the Silk Road? So probably. Uh, the decreased sweating got, got my attention as mm-hmm. we were talking yeah, about that recently. Yeah. Yeah, but the other one is, is always it's kind of baffles me, and I'm always attracted to these commercials where they say, if you have a swollen tongue, call your doctor. And so, the, I mean, it just the whole thing makes zero sense because you, if you got a swollen tongue, you don't tongue. It just to me, I just the image, it's the image that cracks me up. Sorry. No, I like that. It's uh, I, I'm looking at their website, um, so they talk of OAB. How's your OAB, John? OAB. What does that even mean? Overactive bladder. Overactive bladder. <laughs> we have an acronym. Luckily, OAB. Someone that was had the a... Office of uh, Africa or uh, the American <laughs> Bureau of Africa or something. Yeah. Someone actually had a meeting about that. Hey, you know, let's. Uh... I, I I know why I'm out, why I'm I'm off off keel here. 
Yeah, Mickey's, oh. Mickey's gone. Oh, you didn't get your pancakes? I didn't get my pancakes. She, she left uh, Friday. She's um, in uh, Napa She's Valley. She's on the road again? She's in Napa Valley with Molly Wood. Aren't you getting a little suspicious of these two? <laughs> I just keep saying send pictures. <laughs> and then I get a picture, and it's it's Mickey next to a 65 Corvette. Look, huh. Yeah. Like, so they're up there looking at cars. I don't know. What is, what is going on with that? If they're going to do that, they should have gone to the Monterey Concourse d'Elegance, which is like uh, running, I think, this weekend. Mickey says that uh, it's gotten really Vegasy up in uh, Napa Valley. Well, the smart money, uh, for one thing, you don't, if you're going to tour the area, I mean, most of the smart money goes to Sonoma County and, and cut, then cuts across uh, to, to Calistoga, across the mountains. And then comes down the uh, Silverado Trail, and you avoid Highway 29 for the most part, and then you you avoid all that. Uh, one of the things that's going on up there that's creating this is is Meadowood, which is this uh, three star Meadowood and 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 French Laundry, these two restaurants in the right, southern part of right, the valley, right. have created this you know foodie thing in the area, and it's all southern, it's the Yountville area kind of that you want to avoid because it's just like filled with tourists and hoity-toities and elites and all the rest of it. <laughs> Is that where you might find a 65 Corvette? I'm sure. Uh, here's the here's the text message. Probably in, te it's probably in mint condition and oh, yeah. owned by an elite. Here's uh, what Mickey texts me. Uh, Napa is now Vegas, very commercial, sad how it's changed. We're having a great time. Today we're doing a hike and we'll lay at the pool. They have a bowling alley here where the balls light up. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Is that? Like, I used to have a yo-yo that would do that. It's the same thing. There's a little mechanism yeah. inside the ball centrifugal that, force. Yeah. As soon as the ball rolls, it lights up and flashes. Gotta love it. Dumb. So uh, yeah, no, they're in that part of. The, it is kind of splashy in that area, but that's not the place you want to go. And you can't even go go have a good wine tasting because there's so many people in that area. You have to pay. If you have to pay to taste wine at a winery, wow. Leave. That makes no sense, does it? No. Anyway, well, I'm glad they're having fun while you. Uh, uh, yeah. So I'm. That's why I'm a little. I'm a little. Vegetate. Off. Yeah, I'm a little off. The, um, the United States District Court, District of Massachusetts, released an interesting document. United States v. Zohar Sarnef, aka Jahar Sarni. Uh, governments assented to motion for a protective order. And uh, this is very interesting. Uh, parties have agreed to the entry of a protective order attached to ensure the discovery information is not unnecessarily disseminated, that sensitive information is filed under seal, and that access controls are in place. Parties agree the attached order is in the interest of justice. And then there's, uh, you know, the protective order is really weird. They can actually destroy this stuff after both uh, after both parties have seen it. Um, uh, defendants' uh, counsel shall not disclose materials or the contents directly or indirectly to any person or entity other than the persons engaged uh, to assist in the defense. Uh, you know, why is this all secret? Why can we not know about uh, these the horrible terrorists? <clears throat> And uh, and how they uh, and whatever uh, whatever uh, materials that might be found. I mean, why why does it have to be secret? Why is that? I don't know. Makes no sense unless the whole thing is rigged. It was what we expect or suspected at the very beginning. An FBI six week cycle thing gone astray. Yeah. And yeah. by the way, I am recounting that that episode that was aborted. This last uh, oh no, you have you have to reset the clock. Uh, I, I reset the clock on that. I, I then figured it, well, that was what they're supposed to do, and now they're going to they, they, these. They can't just do ad lib something now, so we got to go another six weeks, right? Which I believe would be. Let's take a look on the calendar. I have to get the calendar up. I understand from uh, our contacts that uh, there is a huge reorg going on right now at the FBI. Hold on a second. Four, five. It'll be the week of the fifteenth of September, the Ides of September. Oh well, you know that makes. Uh, you know what? It's uh, saving it for the second half. 
I'll tell you what, why don't we, why don't we uh, uh, thank some people? It'll be short oh, wait, anyway. Before we do that, then we want to play one of these uh, little promotional things to show people that <laughs> we're not like this. Okay. Remind me, though. Remind me I have this 15th of September. I have something for that. Okay. I'll put a big arrow next to it because I wrote it in the book. Yep. Um, this was a – there's the two-parter here. This is from Fox, the great – conservative Fox News and the five the fame and by the way they got the Guilfoyle's not on so they put this other woman uh, this kind it's of this the summer she's on vacation yeah the one that I don't care for she's kind of stupid and they have her in that spot with her legs her, <laughs> her legs the leg look spot. like crap oh no get Guilfoyle back Guilfoyle's got these long <laughs> cover up beautiful cover thigh, up uh, Beautiful uh, 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 calves. This and woman's got a lumpy, crappy-looking leg. She's going to kill the show. <laughs> please, please, people, we're talking as television producers here, not as yeah, John. No, that's what I'm saying. If I was yeah. at Fox yeah. right now, I'd be, I'd be irked. They could have put Perino's got better-looking legs than this one, but she's kind of short. I so think yes, short legs. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, too. Sh their legs aren't that long. Unbelievable. Right. So this thing, this is the odd editorial. So the, this guy Gutman. Who is the, he's actually a comic. I don't even know why he's, he's got any creds at all for doing this stuff, but he's, he just apparently, and I let this go past his little editorial into the kind of into the segment because one of the guys who's, who plays the liberal, he's flat. You'll hear the whole thing, but you got this is a disgusting little editorial done for the purposes of nothing but an advertisement, but let's play it. Fake no more. It's a horrible song. It's a great song. Surprise, you're dead. The biggest creeps on earth are those who claim to love it. Their love is really hate for people, specifically poor people. Case in point, Bjorn Lumberg, he's a great greenie with a conscience. He reports that activists in the Philippines have destroyed a field of golden rice. That's rice that's genetically modified to contain vitamin A. Of the three billion people who eat rice every day and, and are at risk for vitamin A deficiency, this new rice helps prevent nearly 700,000 deaths a year and a half a million kids from going blind. These activists are essentially accessory to mass murder. I say hang them by their toenails. These creeps operate from the evil notion that everything from Earth is good and everything made by man is bad. It's an idea propagated by green journalists crusading against Monsanto, morose health editors, and loopy celebrities who condemn vaccines. For every media loudmouth who favors natural over man-made, some poor peasant dies. Remember the DDT ban? A a million babies won't because that ban allowed them to die from malaria. Thank the green movement. Natural is just the elite's way of saying I'm better than you to the poor. Lucky for them, they have no problems getting vitamin A. Their maids do all the shopping. So while it's cool to push fake fear about genetically modified foods, all it does is kill people. Celebrities march against Monsanto, but they're really marching against progress. And in service to their ego, they turn a blind eye to the suffering of others whose actual blindness they cause. When did this get put in the show? What? This whole segment. It, I, I know anything there about this. <laughs> you, you didn't read the, my, uh, my no, notes? I, but when did they put this in? Uh, what are all, you talking about? At like 10 I didn't know you were doing this. Oh, on what? <laughs> would just, this whole thing. Would this, have, would this have changed anything? <laughs> no. You wouldn't have done any preparation. You would I, that was so, confusing. It, well, so he has this editorial, which I've never seen on this show. No. Uh, the guy, the one guy says, what the hell is this you're doing? Because he was right. Because he, he, he read the script. He didn't see it in there. Right. It wasn't in the script. Perino knew about it. And so she and she's on board. And so she said, no, it was in a 1035. And this guy, you know, this Bob guy, he doesn't, you know, he's got an old script, whatever. He's kind of flabbergasted by the whole thing. He's caught blindsided because they're doing this pro Monsanto thing. Right. So no, obviously, yeah. So it continues. Now, this is the the next clip is the Fox idiots, and and they go on and and the one there's one guy in the middle you can hear him and they're all stammering all of them when they're because they got notes in front of them and they're looking down at the notes trying to make sense of the notes and they're trying to say they they have a points they're trying to make and they're stumbling and stammering. And it's all trying to make this point that Monsanto's great, it represents progress and all the rest of it. And I found this to be the weirdest thing on Fox. People point out, oh, this, you know, somebody doesn't know something on Fox. I thought this was the most rigged segment. It was borderline disgusting. 
uh, that I've ever seen on Fox is all for commercialism. Let's play this part. It's essentially dead thanks to facts and no, data, it's Bob. Not dead. Uh, uh, do you, do you feel like they're moving to gem- genetically modified foods and going after Monsanto and stuff like it, that? It's wow. really crazy. They're envir- enviro terrorists. They, they'll do anything. They, they, they're holding up um, fracking projects yeah. for environmental reasons, and it's bringing jobs to the area. Genetically <laughs> modified agriculture. <laughs> could save the world. Honestly, right. <laughs> the, the, and, and the other part is uh, almost all of our corn seed, all, almost, almost all of our soybean seeds are already genetically modified. So they're a little late to this ball game, to this dance. But genetically modified, modified agriculture away. is going to bring food to starving areas you around the food, world. You think the world would be better off without environmentalists? I think yes. the world would be better off with genetically modified yes. agriculture. That's all we need. I can't that, remember. That, problem answer, is they can't, that they can't that. afford it right now. They, they need to, to, to produce but, more. So and they you can have to have, um, I can't remember the name of the company. It's an American company that figured out how to inject protein into the wheat so that if you, if that was the only thing that you had to eat that day, that you actually were getting a more balanced um, That's nutrition because that. of it. And yeah. it actually, it, it's scientists who are actually helping yeah. Uh, absolutely, and I don't. Th- they don't have any proof about the on the environmental concerns. They just are worried about it. Yeah, and by the so way, that means that people starve. There are. Monsanto. Wow. Was that the most amazing thing you've heard? I mean, wow. they're, and they're all looking down, by the way, trying to look for uh, bullet points to. to I, and they no, can't ad lib. I think they're looking for their checks. <laughs> well, that too. <laughs> but it was like I've never seen a shameless promotion. And everybody was in on it except wow. the one guy, yeah, because he wasn't going to go for it, I guess, or they or they didn't think he would do it. I don't know what the reason they left the one guy out for, and uh, it was just astonishing to me. And Perino, uh, I, oh, they've injected uh, protein. <laughs> what is he talking about? I love it. Like if if you don't eat genetically modified food, you go blind and die. Or so, that was kind of what I got die. out of this whole thing. Is wow, that's that, that that's that's pretty astounding. That's well, we astounding. don't do that. No. I'm 11, and even I can spot a douchebag. Exactly. I'm going to show my support by donating to No Agenda. Imagine all the people who could do that. Oh, yeah, that'd be fab. Yeah, on No Agenda. We, that's not how we operate, and uh, we can't operate that way. First of all, because neither of us have the legs for the job. So we, that's just a non starter right there. Uh, even though I am wearing my man dress and they are protruding uh, proudly uh, beneath uh, the dress. But uh, no. No. Yes. Don't yes. tell me this. <laughs> you got a visual? Big boy? <laughs> man dresses well, are you're, cool. You're, this, I, we already know how you're going to end up. So. Uh, uh, let me see. Overdose? No. Oh. Well, well how am I going to end up? Wearing a dress for real. <laughs> okay, Mac, I want to thank a few people. Mac, you're already wearing the dress. Yeah. Mac, well, she's not here. Maybe, you know, I feel so much more comfortable in the dress. Mac, thank you. <laughs> My wife bought me, the, bought me the dress. Oh, well, that tells you something there, right there. Yeah. <laughs> Wait until she, okay. Mac, thank <laughs> There's a million possibilities, uh-huh. a million ways to go with that one. <laughs> Don't even try. Mag Tank in uh, La Jolla, California, 175 bucks. Hey, gents, top-notch show last week. Keep them coming. Please ask John to tap out Morse code for LOL on his clickety-clack keyboard. No, that, okay. was I, that was ITM that you did. You didn't do LOL. Oh, that's what I thought he meant. Uh, Sir Victor Gregg, 8888 in Decatur, Georgia. Mm-hmm. Uh, belated 88 for the uh, John and Mimi. <clears throat> oh, that's <laughs> nice. I think Mimi and Mickey should have their own show on the Norigenda Network. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> sure. Yeah, yeah. They they never even uh, met. This is actually quite uh, an an atrocity. It would also be great if you could record and post the producer after shows. What? Eh. No, we're not in charge of that. Yeah, it's not our. It's none of our business. Nicholas Omen, seventy seven, seventy seven, of Thief River Falls, Minnesota. Uh, he needs some house selling karma, and we'll give him that because we might get another donation. You've got karma. It's Thomas Borowski in uh, Obing, Deutschland, seventy-seven thirty-three, and he says he commutes to Munich three times a week, eighty minutes one way, which is probably on a on a fast train, and it's got to be a long distance he's going. And because of Noragenda, I actually look forward to my commute. You know, I've been in touch with uh, 
with Molly Wood because, you know, just because, um, you know, Mickey was going out there, etc. And uh, and she says, oh, I'm, I'm listening to, you know, the show has changed my commute. Because, you know, I, I think she, lis- she listened to uh, the, um, a recent episode. Like, what do you mean? She said, no, I'm actually in the slow lane 30 minutes longer <laughs> to get into San Francisco and enjoying it. Uh, Molly Wood? Yeah. She listens to the show. Well, she did recently. Huh? I think probably because you know Mickey then is going to be hanging out and doing whatever girls do when they're together, and uh, you know she did. You know she might as well know something about me. Yeah, I guess that would. Do it. <laughs> hey, that, right, that guy get... you're married to. Uh, he wears dresses, really. That's so sexy. <laughs> Brian Gilbert in uh, Trona, California, seventy five bucks, and then we go to oh sixty nine, sixty nine, dude. <laughs> For 69 guys. Brian Brown, Orange, California. Black Knight, Brian Barrow, and Wooten Bassett. Wooten. UK. Uh, Sam Menner in Box Hill, South uh, Victoria, Australia. Jeffrey Maxwell, Cranberry Township, Pennsylvania. The Viscount of Marin, Michael Miller uh, in Tiburon, 6969. And uh, he says, Thank you for not selling iodine. Uh, Gregory Ball of <laughs> Wallsend, UK, and uh, finally Patrick Vaughn in Traverse City. Sixty-nine, the the sixty-nine, dudes. He says he got his night ring, and uh, he so he's actually Sir Patrick Vaughn. We don't mm-hmm. well, that's ever going to come to fruition. Well, I think yeah, we'll get the database. Fixed. Please de douche the entire no agenda back off. <laughs> You've been de douched. I did want to mention something, um, you know, because uh, you know Austin is uh, is home to uh, that you know the the Infowars craziness, and you know about the iodine thing because I you know I was in the car and I was driving around I was driving back from the airport and you know and so we actually have uh, Alex Jones on the radio here, and I swear to God I heard a twenty minute segment, twenty minutes which included Mike the Power Ranger or the Health Ranger or whatever from from natural products whatever also in Austin. And it started off with genetically modified crazy crap, man. Put it down, and they, you know, they, well, we looked at the Health Ranger Labs, and uh, we looked at M- McNuggets, and there's no chicken in the McNuggets. And then, and it was 20 minutes, and it all led up to. Uh, I mean, there's no chicken in the McNuggets. I'm telling That's you, bull. and it led up to 20 minutes of this, 20 minutes about the food, and and the, and the payoff was a water filter commercial. I'm telling you, people, you're being fleeced. Don't listen to that. Let's go to Costco. And he, but I, he does it well, by the way. You're like, oh, yeah. What's the, oh, wait, yeah, GM. Oh, no, no, no. There's no. The, the, we're what? not questioning the professionalism <laughs> no. of the sales pitch. Yeah, the pitch is fantastic, but it's a sales pitch. Yeah, the whole show is. Oh. All right. So anyway, back to work. Onward. Uh, we have Edward Sheets in Brewerton, New York, 6666. Heather Simpkin in uh, Henley on Thames. Hmm. Oxfordshire. It's beautiful uh, there. Okay, it is. is really nice. And she, says, and she says, love from Heather. Yes, Heather's. Send yeah. pictures. Send pictures, according to Adam. Yes. But, you know, I never get these pictures. No. Uh, that's Heather Simkin. Adam Mikolacek, I'm guessing. Uh, or Mikolajcek. Mikolajcek, I think, yeah. 6666 in Ithaca, New York. Ma- Michael Maya Tico. Maya Tico. I'm thinking Maya, Milton, Maya, Ontario, Maya Canada. He needs a birthday shout. We got it on the list. Yep. Uh, Stephen Nelson, Wheat Ridge, Wheat Ridge, uh, Colorado. Uh, Brian Curry, your uh, relative out there in Quesnel, British Columbia, probably pronounced Quesnel. I, you know, I, um, so he's friends with another one of our producers, and he said, "Hey, you know, you mentioned on the show that if anyone's name was Curry, you do an email forward for them, and he requested that for Brian, and I did it." So Brian at Curry dot com will yeah. go to him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's cu- that's yeah. good. Yeah, come on, you'll man. have a whole club of them. That's, <laughs> Michael know. Gates, Colorado Springs, fifty. These are all fifty. Andrew Haverson, Gravenhurst, Ontario. Josh McDonald, Brunswick, Victoria. Kyle Bauer in Worcester, Ohio. Uh, Philip Meeson in Powes, UK. And finally, Mark Tanner and Whittier and Rob K from Parts Unknown. And I have a note from him. I would do want to read because it came in uh, as a, as a mail. I was hit in the mouth last October. Shout out to Doug F. And finally got around to contributing value for value for the best podcast in the universe. Sorry for the small amount, but I'm working four jobs 
four uh, jobs pursuing four. my American dream of just getting by. No, no, that's for, that's your bargain, baby. That's, that's yeah, your middle your class. That's your middle class bargain, yeah, right that's there. Bargain. Four jobs. Thanks for all the work you do to package. This is the good line I liked. Thanks for all the work you do to package the bitter taste of the truth <laughs> in a manageable <laughs> and entertaining hold format. On, hold on, I'm gonna write that down. Packaging the bitter truth since 2007. The bitter taste of the truth. Oh, oh packaging the bitter. The taste. bitter taste. Nice. Packaging the bitter taste of the truth since 2006. Uh, we do have another note here that I have to read. It's, I've got a postcard and a bunch of photos of some screwball area called Swabish Gemund. Or Gemund. Uh, Mario sent this note in. Uh, and he doesn't want to l- let anyone know who he is. <laughs> Good work. <laughs> it's a test. He says it's a test for the honest postman. And he's the one who sent the 15 euros in cash. Ah, nice. Uh, which I'll put in the bank as such. And and the, 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 the little bitty five euro note, which is so small, and um, which got me to looking into uh, thinking that the the euro is becoming this the, moral the, equivalent of the, the ruble, ruble. <laughs> the, the, the euro, the ruble of the future. So um, anyway, we want to thank these that's folks. It. And that's it. That's it. Yeah, that's we're all we done. got. We're done. Well, we do have uh, some birthdays and some uh, and two nightings. Of course, we have an instant night today, and also. Uh, Robert Montaya, who uh, who did come in with his donation on the previous show, which brought him up to knighthood. So we're going to get to that. Uh, thank you all very much. Um, we could do with more. Um, but as John said, it's probably tough, so we understand. You've got that bargain, you know, that middle-class bargain. Yeah, you're Obama's on. not helping the show. <laughs> not really. org slash N-A. Maiatico says happy birthday to his son Mason, who turns five today. And Todd LG congratulates Henry, who turned seven, and Isabella, she turned five on the 15th. Henry is uh, celebrating his seventh birthday today. Happy birthday from your uncles, Adam and John, here at the No Agenda Show. Cease and desist, Dvorak. On the harmonica. It's the wrong key for the birthday song. Uh, what's that? Oh, right. yeah, probably. Just pick up your sword. Uh, it's stuck. It's, you know, can you come up with a new one once in a, <laughs> once in every hundred episodes? Just say something else, like like what? Why so I sh- how many lines are there? About I'm stuck? glad you asked. I sharpened it right here. Jeez, come on, a little creativity. Alexandru Bersanu, Bersanu, step forward, please, along with Robert Montoya. Both of you, gentlemen, have uh, contributed to the No Agenda Show in the amount of $1,000 or more. In fact, uh, Alexandru has contributed significantly more. And thank you so much, and I hereby pronounce thee, Sir Alexandru and Sir Robert, both knights of the No Agenda Roundtable. Gentlemen, for you, we've got quite a trip of hookers and blow, rent boys and Chardonnay, hot pants and boot, long haired, heavy metal, and scotch, went to the beer, ribbon, and the mutton and mead. Good. Yeah. Dvorak.org slash NA. We, we, we're flatlining here. We got to pick it up. We well, do have an anniversary coming up. We can start promoting that, I guess. It's in October. What is our anniversary, honey? Sixth, which is, uh, I, I believe, to be the paper mache anniversary. <laughs> right. And what is the date of our paper mache? <laughs> uh, let's see. I don't know offhand. Isn't October. I don't know what it is. Somebody knows. Yeah, No Agenda Nation knows. Yeah. And let me go to it and check it out. Okay. Noagendanation.com. You go there. And you click on archive. And then it says archives. And then you scroll down to the first show, which is really not that good to listen to. People listen to it. I don't know why. And it turns out to be on October 26th. We did that show. And then it was a weekly show. Yeah, it was th- 30 while. minutes, and it was 30 minutes, and we had no yeah. jingles. Yeah, that was, first show was 37 minutes, the second show was 34 minutes, the third show was 37 minutes, then it was 42, bump, bumped to 42, right. went back to 33, 39, 40, then boom, out of the blue, for no apparent reason, 68 minutes. And what, what was the date on that one? That was on December 15th. What year? 2007. So we struggled along with these hour-long shows, and they continued. One one bumped up to seventy-three minutes. Went back to fifty-three. The next show. I think. 60- we, I think. I think we just go back to thirty minutes. I think it's a great plan. 
Well, for this kind of income, maybe. It then it bounced again. We had, we had another bounce up in uh, under the vasectomy show in issue twenty three, the ninety minutes, and we kept on the ninety minute theme for, for a, while, a while. For a while, yeah, ninety minutes, and then we dropped back to sixty. This is interesting. I don't remember this, but all right, let's uh, let's move on. This is no, oh, sorry. Yeah, I, uh, I get carried away with analysis. You do, you do. Now, what uh, we, a chart would be useful. Now, now, do you remember what you were supposed to do? Yes, I have a big arrow. Yes. You are going to talk about September 15th. Right. So now let's back this up for a second because we have we know from our inside sources and the FBI is reorging right now because they've missed their six-week uh, deadline three times in a row. Well, they did. It started a, they with had the Boston aborted bombing. aborted mission. Well, it started with the Boston bombing, which wasn't theirs. Right. That what that's that's what messed it up. So they didn't get to take credit. So they went around shooting people in the back of the head, which is fact. You know, they went around driving over people, killing people. Now they're like, you know, we've got you know we've got court cases where we can't show the evidence. There's all kinds of weirdness going on with that. And then it just it went from from bad to worse. We had the uh, the plane crash messed it all up. The San Francisco plane crash was another six uh, six week uh, episode, but it wasn't it wasn't planned by them. The whole point is they need to do something every six weeks, otherwise the the budgets dry up. And now it's been uh, three six weeks periods in a row, and now there's a reorg going on. So well, so, we had that that the, the aborted thing that took there was a, some it was a. Test. It was that crazy thing that took place. I forgot a couple. It was like Sunday last Sunday. The the the, the reason you know the six week we've decided because we saw the pattern is because people will forget and they won't be so jacked. You know, you got to keep reminding them. And six week looks like a good kind of a time frame to keep reminding people. So and they can't remember, so they won't spot the cycle. Anyway, that's my thinking. But they got to do something. You're right. Go on. What, so something's going to happen on the 15th. Yeah, around mid-September, uh, and that would. And what, what was your date? The 11th? No, not the 11th. 15th. The, the week 15th. of the 15th. Okay. So it's not going to be the 11th because that would be September 11th. We know that nothing's going to happen because nothing ever does happen except uh, you it know, would, it would draw you know kidna- kidnapping in Benghazi. Minor, 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 minor stuff. It would. There may be something that's actually instituted, instigated. I'm sorry by the by some bad guy who thinks September 11th is a cool time to do something, but uh, and that could be thwarted. That would be good. Uh, maybe the 11th is only four days off. It might be a good day to do something. Well, what's supposed to happen is the kill shot. What's the kill shot? The kill shot is, and now you're going to start reading about this more and more. We're in the middle of um, uh, a solar maximum. And we have, in fact, just yesterday we had an M, I think it was an M3 or an M4. So there's a, there's a CME, a coronal mass ejection, which is once again, um, we're passing through it now. So you know, the ham radio is pretty much dead at the moment. Uh, the kill shot is, and, and so we're not sure if it's going to be blamed on a solar activity or if it actually will be solar activity. Uh, but we're going to have such a, a massive event that this is the one that is going. It's going to be EMP, and this is going to fry the electronics, shut it all down. This is this is what you know the FEMA has been uh, waiting for. DHS has been buying up all the ammo for. This is the big one, and that's supposed to happen somewhere that week of the fifteenth of September. Kill shot. Hmm. The kill shot. Where'd you get this? Sources. Sources. What crackpot website did you get this? Sources. Uh huh. It's not just okay. a website. You know, I have my okay. Yeah, I know you do. You get these guys. You get these guys who read the websites for you, and then they report in. But okay, <laughs> no, they don't read the websites for me and report in. Yeah. No, uh, we have. I know how it works. All right. Hey, listen. I'm going to have a Faraday cage, and in that Faraday cage, I will have a number of things that I want to be. They'll be working. Well, you know, these things, it's not, it doesn't envelop the entire Earth when just you have a coronal case, mass. Just in case. I'm going to have my Yesu FT-817 in there. Because, you know, that'll, that'll have communications. Yeah, probably not a bad idea to keep a ham radio in a, in a Faraday cage anyway. Yeah. yeah well, um, can, can, can it just need... be a lead box? Do you have to build a whole cage? No, no, cage? lead box is fine. Okay. But, you know, Faraday cool. cage, you can breathe. 
Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to sit in the cage. It's just for the ham radio. <laughs> uh, no, lead box is great, but it's a lead box. I mean, please. You, all you need is a, uh, is some copper foil. Uh, and there's actually some new material that comes up. My wallet's made with this stuff, and you can't get – signals can't get out of it. So you can w- walk around with uh, – if you get a passport card, which I've been meaning to get uh, for going to Canada, it's the easiest way to get across the border – how about uh, just yeah. using your passport? Well, you're dragging your passport around. It's not really... Oh, oh, John, why are you limping? <laughs> I'm carrying my passport around. It's so okay, I, get your big, I know what you're saying, but I just think, you know, why <laughs> drag around a big old document like oh, that? Oh, it's so big, the document. It's like, I don't... Oh, wait a minute. Oh, sorry, man. I didn't mean to hurt you with my passport. Well, I, I'm glad to see that you're on some sort of a, uh, a sarcastic <laughs> roll here, and you think it's hilarious. Well, I'm doing a Dvorak, actually. It's roll reversal, which is kind yeah, of I'm weird. Yeah, I'm noticing this. But it's anyway, weird. so... I, I know. It's, <laughs> I, this is why I'm appreciative. I'm actually in awe <laughs> it's kind of, of twisted. how funny you are. It's kind of twisted. <laughs> what is wrong with this picture? <laughs> so anyway, the point is, is that when you buy, get the passport card, they put it in a little Faraday cage. Mm. And it's this material that you can get. I guess you can buy it. And you can actually just use this stuff instead of, generally speaking, a good Faraday cage is this copper stuff with little holes in it. Have you ever seen this stuff? And yeah, uh, it's, yeah, of course. it resists all kinds of things. You know. But, yeah, and no anything, metal, just metal box. Metal? It just has to be metal? I mean, well, that, no, that you don't want sense. steel. That does, no, that doesn't make sense. No, I mean, it has to be some sort of a, a, a metal that doesn't allow our RF to pass. Right, so, okay. Because because the 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 transceiver itself is in a metal casing, but that's not going to be enough, right? Yeah, it has to be complete. okay. Well, let's go back to this this idea. So then what? So we have a big event. Boom! Blows out a bunch of transformers. Takes the satellite communications down. Blows up uh, the the Google. Uh, the whole net goes down. Let's say it happens. It's really bad. The net goes. What what happens? So now what? What's your point? Cool. How is this going to affect anything? No, oh, okay, it won't affect anything then. No, I'm just asking you, what do you think is going to be the fallout? Are they going to call it, depends. have the, martial de- law? Dep- well, it depends. Are they going to start rounding people up? <laughs> Gays and gypsies first. <laughs> and guy, dudes in dresses. Well, that would be on the top of my list. Now, the funny thing about this uh, about this story is that it's really it's it's really quite funny. Um, is that apparently this is this came from Snowden? You see that everything now. What? Oh yeah, it, it didn't. Obviously, John, come on. Everything comes from Snowden yeah. now. I mean, ob- obviously it didn't. But this is but it's important because. I mean, I, I just want to get on the Snowden thing for a second because there's a lot going on. Um, first of all, you can pretty much. Uh, check it right off the list. Uh, what are, we were talking about Snowden's dad, and that uh, you know, we, I didn't even think it is his dad. The guy who's coming out, saying, "Oh, I, you know, the, who apparently has a visa to go to Russia to see him." And so now Snowden sends this. This whole thing stinks. Snowden sends an email to the Huffington Post. Yeah, because apparently Glenn Greenwald's no good anymore, and he says, uh, uh, "What?" Yeah, you didn't. That's bull crap. Oh well, well, well it, this this got picked up pretty big, pretty pretty wild, pretty. Uh, Why? Far no, I wide. think your initial observation is Glenn Greenwald's no good anymore. So he's sending a just blowing a, a a quickie email to the Huffington Post of all publications. Yep, and uh, he's saying because uh, you know, remember, and I also said, look out for this lawyer, this Bruce Fine, this guy, like you know. Yeah, we've talked about him, right? Uh, so Snowden says, uh, I've been fortunate to have uh, legal advice. Uh, no, no, here. The National Security Agency whistleblower Edward Snowden wants to set the record straight after individuals associated with his father have, in his words, misled journalists into printing false claims about his situation. In an emailed statement to the Huffington Post, Snowden said that neither his father, Lon Snowden, his father's lawyer, Bruce Fine, nor Fine's wife, Maddie Fine, this is interesting, represent yeah. me in any way. None of them have been or are involved in my current situation, and this will not change in the future, Snowden said of his father and the Fines. 
I ask journalists to understand that they do not possess any special knowledge regarding my situation or future plans, and not to exploit the tragic vacuum of my father's emotional compromise for the sake of tabloid news. Hello? <laughs> That's rather explosive, I would say. What did, what is you think it means? Well, he uh, well, this is these are the camps that are involved, um, and Fine is you know he represents entire countries. You know this guy he's he, he's he's a kook, and I think uh, my initial reaction was, you know, these are spooks trying to to get to him. They're on some team that's not necessarily his team, posing as his dad, and this is his way of going. Hold on, back off. You know, he, I, I don't think he can say, hey, I'm on this team and the, other, and the other team's coming over to kill me. So this is how it's done. And he needs to get really, you know, just giving it to Glenn Greenwald. Is, you can't, it's, Glenn's no good anymore. I mean, I, that no, I Glenn's think is, got his own agenda. Oh, he's got whatever he, documents he, he ever. wanted. Yep. He doesn't give a shit about this guy. No. And he's going to just promote the, Gren, the Glenn Greenwald brand. Show. Yeah, brand and uh, his lords, which I think is, I said incorrectly MI6, but it's MI5. Now, as I'm so, I'm looking through this. Which is I, part of the same. Well, yeah. So it's, it's unlike us, we're, they're, they're a continuum. This is like the FBI is MI5, only they're spooks, right? And the MI6 is the international group, but they're actually all in this. The kind of ex, you go, you move from one to the other rather easily. Less so with the FBI and the CIA until recently, when they're moving these guys, you know, from FBI to CIA to Defense Department. It's like now it's musical chairs. So here, anyway. so if you look at um, this Bruce Fine guy, is, is very, very, very interesting. He was also a legal advisor for the Ron Paul 2012 presidential campaign. Probably helped tank it. Now that I think about it, actually, when we when we were analyzing the campaign early on, we had discussed that possibility that he was there to screw up the campaign. So was that failed. fine? Was that fine? Who we're talking I, I, about? Well, we were talking about somebody. He is represented as a lobbyist, Pakistan, Sudan, Turkey, Tamil. Um, Tamil? Yeah. That's a, that's okay. As in the Tamil Tigers? Yeah, yeah, but it's not a country. It's a, bunch, it's a group I, of terrorists. I didn't terrorists. say country. I said that's just a list. I, yeah, he represents terrorists. Exactly. <laughs> um, so it's a very interesting guy. There's a couple of, uh, couple of links in the show notes so you can – I mean, we – we're on to him right away that this guy is no good and his whole his whole uh, you know his, his legal practice seems to be sketchy at best. So I'm looking around and I find some pretty interesting things. Uh, to you know Snowden, uh, as the story goes, he didn't, he didn't reach out to Glenn Greenwald. Uh, turns out that. Um, Greenwald actually wasn't even interested. I think, uh, do I have this? Uh, yeah, Poitras said that, uh, and Greenwald has admitted to this, that he was approached m a month earlier. Here, here I have, so now there's this Moss guy. We talked about the Moss guy who all of a sudden is in the picture as, as it, one of reporting on the situation. And, he, and this is actually the clip that led me to some research. It was really interesting and really unique. He chose them not because they work for the biggest publications in the world, which neither one of them do. He chose them because they had similar political sympathies, similar ideas that he had. And in particular with Laura Poitras, he knew that she had been under surveillance herself and that she was probably capable of conducting encrypted communications, which he required. He actually tried to contact Glenn Greenwald initially first. But Greenwald didn't have encrypted communications and didn't really kind of want to get up to speed on that, so just kind of ignored Snowden's requests. And so he went to Poitras, and Poitras, who's been under surveillance, has been stopped at airports more than 40 times, who's working on a film about surveillance and who is leading a very encrypted kind of life. Uh, she was able to offer the encryption and the security that Snowden required in order to be able to disclose the NSA files. Now, that's only part of the story. Because Poitras and I've and I and again all this is laid out in well, the, in the you, show notes. What you should I'm just saying you should use her name properly. Laura Poitras. Yeah, no, no, it's Laura Poitras stopped at airports forty times. That's her. <laughs> that's her, her, that's her full name. name. Laura Poitras stopped at airport forty times. She went to Applebaum. Now Applebaum uh, is the guy who uh, is behind uh, you know the creation of the Great uh, Compromise Tour Network. 
and also was the guy who all of a sudden popped on the scene as um, the spokesperson for Julian Assange. And you'll recall that uh, he was already involved uh, two years ago in a documentary with Laura Poitras stopped at the airport 40 times. So she went to him, and these people are all connected, and I, I'm going to tell you how in a second. She went to him and said, uh, all right, you know, we've got to figure out if this guy is for real. And Applebaum went, oh, I know how to do that. We'll ask him some questions on the secure encrypted connection, and I'll know if he's for real. And I have a, a copy <laughs> of these questions, which I, if this, these questions have no bearing on whether the guy is for real or not. But I, I'll give you 10 of them. Are German authorities or German politicians involved in the NSA surveillance system? Uh, but if details about the system are now exposed, who will be charged? Did the NSA help to create Stuxnet? What are some of the big surveillance programs that are active today, and how do international partners aid the NSA? Follow up, is there a way of circumventing that? <laughs> Tor. Do the NSA and its partners across the globe do full dragnet data collection for telephone calls, text, and data? The NSA is building a massive new data center in Utah. What is its purpose? I mean, really? I could answer these questions. Do private companies help the NSA? Pff, hello. Are there companies that refuse to cooperate with the NSA? What websites should a person avoid if they don't want to get targeted by the NSA? And uh, the last one I have, what happens after the NSA targets a user? So, okay, so I'm like, these are pretty dumb questions. But okay, you know, the, we'll just, whatever, we'll go with it. Now, now this Laura Poitras stopped 40 times. Now she's very irritating to me. And uh, and her whole her, her whole persona, the pictures, you know, this, this, and now she's kind of you know she's kind of floating out there trying to try. She's she says she wants to be really low key, but she's got all these really styled of her looking out the window, black and white pictures. Yeah, no, these are all pro shots. Totally pro, totally styled. There's no camera phone pictures here. We're involved with now. I, I now I really went down and, and did some deep searching. Um, and no I, selfies. <laughs> selfies, exactly. And, uh, you know, I've been looking at who's been financing her. And I find the uh, um, that she's been financed through a grant from Rebecca Lichtenfeld, Lichtenfeld who um, represents the Bertha Foundation. Remember the Bertha Foundation, John? Yeah, they come up in the conversation about once every six months. So the Bertha Foundation... Uh, finances I, IDFA, the independent, uh, uh, IFDA, the independent, no, the IDFA, the Independent Documentary Film Association, but also the, um, birth of the, the Brit documentaries, Brit Doc, huh. the Brit Doc funds, and they have, uh, directly financed Laura Poitras. Now, I'll remind you that we have uh, not just uh, the financing of uh, Laura Poitras Stop 40 Times uh, getting into the country, uh, but they have also provided the legal representative for WikiLeaks. Remember Jennifer Robinson? Right. Jennifer Robinson is uh, Julian Assange's and WikiLeaks' lawyer, or reading from the Book of Knowledge, an Australian human rights lawyer. She's the legal director for the Bertha Foundation in London and the adjunct lecturer at the University of Sydney Law School. And since 2010, Robinson has been a member of legal team representing Assange and WikiLeaks in London. Now, now Assange and WikiLeaks, you know, if you, they even have a, if you go to WikiLeaks.org, you can see they have a, a, a legal defense fund for uh, Snowden. Yeah, they've raised $12,000 or some you know, ridiculously low amount because no one cares. Yeah, everyone's got a big mouth, but no one actually cares to help them out. And they're probably right, because this this Bertha Foundation, they are financing Link TV. Are you familiar with Link TV? Yeah, and there's an interesting story going on around Link TV. We I, I get some clips there once in a while. Tell me. Link TV, is, well, apparently they they're have a management crisis, so they've fired most of their people, and they're going to replace them with interns, which probably, unpaid interns, which is essentially illegal uh, once you understand the mechanism of interns mm -hmm. uh, and what they're now they're cracking down on this. And what you do, you bring a bunch of interns in, you make them do real work, and then they can sue you, and they have the and the courts will give them all the money that you owed them, 
And so Link TV is essentially at, the, at this moment, as we as we do this show, it's seemingly uh, uh, coming apart at the seams. But they essentially are extremely left wing, uh, uh, alternative to free speech TV with many of the same programs. But most of the stuff on Link TV are documentaries, and I assume they're the documentaries that are funneled from these people. So she, so the Bertha Foundation also funded uh, that Jeremy Scahill, Dirty Wars. Uh, Dirty docu- Wars movie, right. Mu- Jeremy Scahill. Scahill, yes. yeah. They are, okay, now here's what I want you to do. Um, to, to, and, and if you if you go to the Bertha Foundation website, Bertha, go to BerthaFoundation.org. I'm there. Okay. Uh, there, no, you cannot find out anything about them. Right. We know nothing. that. I've been, believe me, as, as you've been speaking, as we no, no. both I, of us do. I worked for hours, and you cannot find. I finally tweeted him. And I said, you know, at Bertha FN or whatever. I said, where's your money from? Who is financing you? You know, the CEO was this chick, Laura Tabotsnik, who is it's just a front. She's like some party girl from New York. She lives in a, a million-dollar uh, a condo uh, in Brooklyn Heights. You know, she, she's registered on their website, but she's an, a nubnuck. She's an, a nothing, a, a nobody. So, nudnik. A, a nugnik, nugnik, whatever. So, But these guys, are, there's millions and millions and millions of dollars. They also finance the Center for Constitutional Rights. Uh, they and they're mentioned in the. Uh, are you familiar with the Center for Constitutional Rights, the CCR? Uh, not offhand. Uh, the, and all of these foundations, they all have about seven million dollars in revenue, between seven and ten million dollars annually. I looked at all the Form Nine Nineties, and they you know, they do big scholarships. So there is millions and millions of dollars. Now, by the way, I'm not against it because I think you know these documentaries uh, some of them that they've been financing are well worthwhile they they sponsor they are the Brit doc financiers I mean, that's a lot of money that's going on there now look if at you the, go to the wiki page and try to find the Bertha Foundation it redirects you yeah. to Brit doc now look yeah, to Brit doc exactly now look at the logo of the Bertha Foundation John right it's the B with the with the whatever that it's just like it's a decorative uh Right. They've changed, but they've changed this logo recently. Oh. Go to between the line, the lines fest.com. Between the lines fest.com. Okay, hang on. You're going to like this. I'm glad you get, when you get off in the deep end here, this is all good stuff. Yeah. Okay, here we go. So this is a document, so another documentary uh, film fest that they financed. You there between the lines? Yeah, I'm there. I'm, click I'm on, looking at it now. Click on video on the menu there, video. Video. You get a whole bunch now of... Now, at the bottom of this page, by the way, they have the new logo. No, that's the old logo, John. And look at it. Look at the logo. What does it look like? It's no longer the little pretty flower. This looks like a gear. Yeah. Symbol, yeah, kind of. Symbolism, my friend. Go now. Go go to Google and type so, in images for communist images. <laughs> Check it out. They all have gears. It's all like a circle gear with like you know. Of course, they got the hammer and sickle on here. They have a big a big B in the middle. This is you know symbolism matters. So I think somehow there's some. Wait wait. You're thinking this is a Russian front? I don't know if it's Russian. It could be. It could be any kind of. Uh, it would make sense because but, you know the you know, Russians. By the way, let's let's make one thing clear. Even though uh, you know, as libertarian and the rest of it, as we are in the show, and, and as amenable we are as we are to all sorts of things, the Russians uh, are notorious historically for setting up these operations all over the place and, and hiding the uh, their their connection to them. I mean, right. this is a well established expertise. That the Russians have have developed, we do it too, uh, but you know it's different because it would if you were doing the No Agenda show no, in we, Russia, no, and we were Russian. We, we we have eagles and arrows and stars, yeah. and we have our own little things. But now every single play, every there's the touch points of all these people, WikiLeaks, uh, Snowden. It all comes back to this Bertha Foundation. Which there's scant little. Zero. You cannot 
you know, they, well, we must have we have people in the intelligence community that can surely send us some insight into this. Well, the and you know, it's it's even unclear if they're located in South Africa or if they're in the United Kingdom. Um, you know, it's if here uh, here's something I I didn't want to do it. Hold on, who is Bertha Foundation dot org? So this uh, this Nutnik. Uh, what's her name? Uh, Laura Tabaznik is on the uh, is on the Who Is record, and she's got a New York cell phone listed. You might want to try call that, and just say, "Hey, where's your money come from?" Uh, but it makes no sense that some chick who lives at seventy Washington Street penthouse in Brooklyn, uh, registered, runs, and owns this entire thing. Yes, I mean no. It's just not. It's just not. It's not true. It's just that doesn't make any sense. And you. And the only thing you can find How do you on her. Spell her last name. Um, you're gonna Laura, get the L A U R A. Yeah, Tango Alpha Bravo Alpha Tango Zulu November India Kilo Tabatznik. You're not gonna get any further than I did, which is you, know, you get the video of her. We played the video. Is it Laura previous, or Lara? Lara. Yeah. Okay. I've heard. You know just. Talking some crap about how she helps some poor kids in Africa once. Oh yeah, I'm looking at her. It's nothing. It's it's don't even. It's not even worth playing. There's no information on this entire outfit. But you get everyone. To, you know all these these nonprofits. Like a representative from the Bertha Foundation came to talk to us and said we're going to match your funds. But they don't mention who. It's like this stealth organization. With and they change their logo from gears to flower. Fascinating, it is, and, and, but a dead end. That's which which it's, makes it even I, more interesting. A, for me, it's yeah, it's frustrating because it's a dead end. Exactly. Well, there's no such thing as a dead end. So the only it's, other, so you know, and you can kind of see how it fits together. Uh, remember, we were, we saw Harry Belafonte um, quotes on the Bertha Foundation website. Harry Belafonte, by the way, who who admits that he's a, a, a communist. No, he's a communist. Communist. Yeah. He's not like a communist. Communist. He's a communist. What? Do, what does that mean? It means he's not like a guy who says he's a commie. He's not like he's, uh, he's an actual commie. He's not like these guys who well, have a communist, you know, kind of thing. He's a real communist. I mean, he's a serious communist. I mean, I don't think there's anything wrong with that necessarily. No, 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 not at all. It's in a free society. There's nothing wrong with it. But, but they, let's be honest about it. He's not working for your best interest necessarily. No. no. And then you have um, Rebecca Lichtenfeld, and she is in charge of. Uh, so she she did the documentary with Peter Gabriel, which is how uh, Peter Gabriel got involved with the Bertha Foundation. Why? Remember, Peter Gabriel's quotes are also on the website. Yeah. So Rebecca Lichtenfeld, she is so she's a producer. Let's see, she also produced Dirty Wars. Oh, gee, how co how coincidental! The real world of P real world of Peter Gabriel, and oh no, she got special thanks for Dirty Wars. Yeah, special thanks because she's the one that helped finance it, and she makes all the choices for the uh, Bertha has a has a specific. Good pitch. Here, hold on a second. Goodpitch.org. Rebecca Lichtenfeld. I manage the media portfolio for Bertha Philanthropies, and as a new name, which advises the Bertha Foundation. We believe that the media has the power to inform, educate, and inspire action. And so uh, they also uh, give money to the Sundance Institute. So I do I like this a lot because here's clearly some ideological outfit hiding behind um uh you know this uh, essentially a website and a couple of dorky looking chicks uh, and they are financing anti-American uh media or anti-American messaging or philosoph philosoph mm. well we don't know well no we do know dirty wars is saying America sucks and it's good yeah. it's true it's true. They're, you know, uh, uh, WikiLeaks. They're financing, literally financing their legal help. But is Say, this being? Do, do we have? But what we don't know. This is what I guess. Think this is what I, the point I was trying to make subtly. I think what we don't know is their actual motivation. 
well, I'm just guessing, looking at the symbolism and who they're working with, that it's uh, it feels like it could be uh, a you know a, could be Russian. Yeah, Russian, and it would make sense because you know we're embarrassing the Russians. The Russians Constantly. are embarrassing us. Yeah. So we, that's what we do. This is the new form of cyber war. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I, if I was Putin, I'd be doing that. I'd mean, be giving the green light to all these things. Now, I will say that I think something, some some real crap is going on that is not being reported. Uh, and that is... Um, well, I, 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 let me say this before you finish discussing the Bertha Foundation per se. When you have a I'm, company, I'm, done, I'm done with Bertha, but go when ahead. When you're hiding yourself to this extent it would obvious i'm just guessing i would put it in the red book i but i would guess that if the actual guy behind this which could be soros could but be. the act because he's you know who knows what he's up to but the but the guy behind it the big money there's a money bags guy behind this whole thing yeah. it's not a bunch of people giving 10 bucks let's face it there's a big pot of money as some guys got if you knew who it was it would destroy the operation. Let's uh, let me Google Bertha Soros. I mean, Bert, the, the name Bertha is the giveaway, but we just don't understand what the clue is. No, no I agree with that too. In fact, I was googling uh, Bertha to try to find some, you know, because it's like these, it's like mobbed up places. They can't, they cannot open an operation that's a that's legitimate and and uh no, of course not of course not without making giving you a hint we had one down the street here and it was a massive uh it was like best buy it was all over the state of california and it was a great place to shop beautiful big stores and it was called white front and <laughs> yeah good one <laughs> and they finally busted them and it was all mobbed up a bunch of guys in protective custody by the way and you and then you heard the name again. You ah, oh, how obvious! Funny, that's funny. Anyway, so the, I would assume Bertha is referring to someone. Probably, I would start look, looking at maybe so famous Soviet women uh, mm. of some sort. I don't know. Is, 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 is Bertha like it's not a Soviet name, is it? Oh, I would think so. Really, Bertha. 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 Female, uh, Germanic, from Old High German, Bertha, meaning bright one. Oh, wow. It's code, man. There's some cool code going on. No, it is code. Uh, the name occurs as a theonym, surviving as Bertha Ta, a figure in Alpine folklore connected to the wild hunt, probably an epithet of something else. Bertha appears as a Frankish given name as early as the 6th century. The Germanic Bertha as a given name may, however, not originate with the theonym, but rather as a short form of the dithemic given names, including the bright element. This is notably the case with the mother of Charlemagne, hmm. Bertrada, called Bertha Broadfoot. Hmm. Carolingian use of the name Bertha as in Bertha, daughter of Charlemagne, and Bertha, daughter of Lothar II, are in this tradition. What do you, so that, what do you, what do you, what do you get from this? Well, Charlemagne's a big deal. It's uh, the Illuminati, man. <laughs> <laughs> There's definitely something in here that's a joke. It's a, it's a gag. Yeah. And we just have to figure out what the gag is. But it's like, you know, the 33 meme we have we've been talking about this for 7 yeah, years. Yeah, but but this but this is a this is a little different, John. This I mean, no, I know, the Bertha it, Foundation it, it, is all over WikiLeaks, Snowden, uh, Poitras, everything. I mean, come on. Yeah, but I know that doesn't mean we can discover the the punchline to the name. No, but we have a lot of people listening to this show. Yeah, somebody might just say it. I mean, get, give it to us. But we haven't. We got a lot of people listening to the show. And we can't get thirty three out of yeah, them. But well, yeah, that's because I know there's something involved with the stock market. Bertha Krupp. Bertha. There's a lot of Berthas. I'll, I'll look at this list and see if there's anything that rings a bell. Bertha of Savoy. We had a gun called the Big Bertha. Yeah, <laughs> it could be it could be some kind of play on that. Hey, I made a mistake. I I, misunder I misread something. Uh, I, no, I, I I read it properly, but I misunderstood what was happening. Remember, I was talking about Gazprom doing a deal with Azerbaijan and and what was going on with that. Yeah. 
so Gazprom is buying from Azerbaijan. And uh, today I, I kind of was helped along and I figured out Mr. Oil actually helped me with a couple of pointers. Um, so the, uh, uh, the, uh, the Azerbaijan uh, gas company wound up buying 66% of Greece's DESFA. This happened a couple weeks ago. Um, and this is uh, important because there's a pipeline called the uh, TAP, the Trans-Adriatic Pipeline. And this thing is competing directly with uh, Russia's South Stream. And uh, brand new information is that both BP and Total have now bought into this. This happened just this week. Have now bought each twenty percent stake in the Trans Adriatic Pipeline, and this is all about getting uh, gas to uh, to Europe. And so they've effectively, with N the Nabucco Pipeline is dead, uh, but they've effectively cut off Gazprom. And right now, and this thing goes to the um, uh, uh, the Caspian Sea. Right now, there's a huge fire in the in a, in a Caspian oil field, and uh, there's already rumors that it may be a strike from from the Russians trying to slow this down so that they can uh, compete with their South Stream pipeline. Um, and so this, you know, it's mysterious. It's kind of like a the, the you know like one like what happened in the in the Gulf here. So this is, this is a, it's a real fire, <laughs> and you know they, I think they got everybody off. You know I don't know if there's any uh, if anyone's been hurt or not, and so the, this race is now uh, uh, ongoing. And I think what what Putin tried to do, or what Gazprom tried to do, is try to you know buy away some of the some of the gas from Azerbaijan, try to either you know raise the price or you know try to compete somehow. Um, but you know it's not working out, and now we have uh, sabotage, potential sabotage taking place in the Caspian field, which is part of uh, part of the, the Trans Adriatic Pipeline. And I'm going to make a prediction based on. I'm just going to think that I, skeptically, as I do, I'm going to think that may actually, or pessimistically, that may that may be sabotage. There may be you know, the, the real real war may be going on here. Um, I'm going to say that we are going to have some real, real crap coming down in Turkey. Uh, because this is the only place where everybody plays. Well, there is a uh, the thing going on in Egypt, which I have one short clip of describing some of it. It's a mess, mm -hmm. mess, mm -hmm. killing you know hundreds of people, literally. And well, uh, the, We don't know, but I'm looking into it, yeah. Well, there's a, they got good footage, let's put it that way. I don't think this is photoshopped. Uh, but anyway, the, the, all hell breaking loose, and the Muslim Brotherhood is getting a lot of attention for itself. And it turns out there's other countries where they're protesting, which has nothing to do with these. I don't. I never do get these these alien the protests at the San Francisco City Hall, for example. What, right. the, what is the point of of that? Well, anyway, the big numbers, the ones, the guys who are really up in arms, uh, at least according to the reports I've seen, and I, I believe it to be true, because I know that they've got to be the next target for this kind of uh, uh, coup, is uh, Turkey. They're, they're huge, right, all sh hell's breaking loose so, in Turkey. So check it out. The, so the, the total BP American Hillary Clinton-backed um, uh, TAP line uh, that it, it it goes through Turkey, you know. Then it all takes, you know, uh, they go through um, Albania, and from Albania, it's going into Italy. But it all goes through Greece first, and you know, now they own that, so it's all going through Greece. The Gazprom South Stream circumvents all of that, but they also go through Turkey, and so we have the two the two competing lines both going through Turkey. To me, it's like this is the perfect opportunity. Someone's got to blow something up, or we've got to have some kind of terrorism. I'm just saying it's going to be Turkey. That is, th that's where it has to happen. Well, that'll be interesting, and uh, we still have <clears throat> seen the fruition of our economic hitman's assertion that we're going to do some major, major uh, embargo of some sort against the Russians, and that's still in play. Hmm. So, don't know. Something's up. Well, a lot is up. And, I, and I, it just seems good that, you know, all the Middle East is crap, you know. It's like, it's all, it's all falling apart. 
And then yeah. no one's going to yeah. be paying attention to what's happening up a little north. But if it really starts happening, if this, you know, bogative terrorism, occupation, pipeline, blowing up, killing people business moves to Turkey, not too long before it's in Europe. And it can be um, Greece, it can be Italy, it could be uh, up north, it could be Austria. Uh, that's where a lot of these pipelines, the Russians like to terminate their pipelines in uh, in Austria to get into Europe. You know, it, within a couple of years, we could have, you know, the so-called uh, uh, Al-Qaeda on the Austrian peninsula. <laughs> well, well. Well, Europe uh, is, is ripe. I mean, if you take, uh, and, and again, I'm going to buy into the with all the footage I've seen all over Egypt uh, of the Muslim Brotherhood people complaining and getting killed uh, in the process and what in what they say they want to die so it seems like a kind of a weird irony there but let's just say that the, these are legit it's if they're if these if these protests are legit it's because they have 25 percent of the egyptian population if you can get 25 percent of the population of any country to riot in the streets you have a you've got problems on your hands because you cannot manage that uh, in Europe, with all the, the the number of, I would say, uh, conservative Muslims that are there, and especially in France, if you could get the, the entire population of these people to riot in the streets, and especially with the European governments being the way they are, I, they could, I think they could take over the place. And it wouldn't be the first time. Where have I seen this attempted before? <laughs> Let me think. Um, WW something. Oh, yeah. World War. So actually, it goes back to the Crusades. It would be pre-Crusades when the Muslims actually took over most of the, the southern part of all of Europe. But uh, well, and, 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 the and they keep talking. And here's the joke of it: it's not as though you know, everyone said, "Well, you know, man, most Muslims have, would have nothing to do with this." But the ones there's enough of them that do. It's a huge number, and they keep talking about doing this. It's not as though anyone wasn't given f fair warning when they when these guys get up in front of their audience and start yelling about creating the new caliphate. Right. What do we do? We think that they're just joking, or are they just <laughs> looking for the big yuck? I mean, I don't see why we don't take this a little more seriously if they're saying this. What we do is we look at it and we go, "Oh, well, that's just an extremist guy," you know. But why hey, is he got such a hey, big audience? You know, um, I, 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 one of my. Well, not my best friend, but certainly very good acquaintance, and someone I work with was killed on these very on this very pretense, you know, by um, a crazy Muslim, Theo von Hoch. You know, shot him, stuck and cut his throat, and then stuck the knife in his chest with a note. Broad daylight with a note. Broad daylight in Amsterdam because of a, a movie. Yeah, and everyone stood around. Well, no, everyone says, oh, whatever, you know, it's not really true, I guess. No, no, uh, whatever. But enough of your Mossad talk, John C. Dvorak. What else we got? No, uh, I think we're done. Um, well, I, wait a minute, wait a minute, let me look at my list here. I, I, think I, got, a... I got a, you know, I'm going to sit here by my email or my bit message and wait for the information to come in about the Bertha Foundation. I'm just, I'm, I'm <laughs> I think you're going to have to. Uh... I'm hopeful. Oh, we got the new savior at CNN. Uh, I'm look this guy up. Oh. I got to I got to talk about this. Stop a rapper, a rapper, a rapper, a rapper. Oh, the the Australian guy, the Canadian no, guy. No, he's not Australian. Where he's is he Canadian. From? Canadian. Yeah. Uh, Scrumbleumbleus. Yeah, I have a little clip of him talking. You can hear it, and then I got to tell you what's what's going on. The hell of an interviewer, and you know, almost have his smile. This guy's been shining a light on racism, poverty, and classism, and I heard. He's a Prince fan. He got a go-to song, Adore, by Prince. I watched his show twice. He's boring. Well, he's not as boring as his peers. And no, he's not. True. And he's. And here's the story. Here's. Let me just give you the background. This guy has got a show on the CBC. And, in fact, if you look at his wiki page, you'll see at least some the remnants is, of him. You know, let me, let me, before you say that, let me explain this, how this works. He is friends with big-name celebrities. That's why he was brought into CNN. How does he become friends with big-name celebrities? Because you're on a state government-controlled uh, broadcast system. I had this exact same thing back in the early 80s. 
you're on a state controlled government broadcast system you have you know only a couple of you know big stations you're the one everybody who goes into canada is going to be on the talk show to promote their book their record the strombo their, show they yeah call it. and so he was the guy and he's kind of the default guy. The default doesn't mean great. And now he's come over here very much like Pierce Moron, and he's, it's not going to work. I mean, uh, the, where are the ratings? He's been on for months now. It's not, it's not going to work. Well, it's a possibility, but let me th – th that's not what I was going to talk about. Sorry. Uh, my th – I was just more amused by – because I hadn't seen him yet. Because in Canada, I've watched his show up there. It's a little actually better produced show in Canada than CNN version. Uh, although, and they run a bunch of packages. They don't do that so much in Canada. But in Canada, and by the way, when I'm in uh, Port Angeles and I'm watching, I'm always watching Canada TV, so I watch this guy. My wife goes ballistic. She hates this guy. Yeah, I don't like him either. I'm, I'm with A lot me. of people just vis viscerally dislike him. I'm with me. But here's the joke of it. <laughs> in Canada, he's like... Hang, earrings hanging down, soul patch, long sideburns, scruffy. <laughs> yeah. Looks like crap. He looks yeah. like a. He looks like he should not be on TV. He's got the piercing in his nose and a tongue stud, and he's just horrible. And so I, I did this. Why I was just cracking up? I saw him on CNN. Earrings are gone. Mm -hmm. Soul patch is gone. Mm -hmm. All the studs and all that. It's all gone. He's cleaned him up, and I watched him on. And I said. I didn't realize it before, but I actually liked him better with all the <laughs> because he had some interest. He's got no interest in his face now. It's just he's a real dull looking person that needs all the studs and earrings yeah, and yeah. soul patches and spots of hair and a long. And so, so I was just I, so I'm thinking uh, and you would have to agree with this. <laughs> they, the guys at CNN, which are just idiots. They said, you know, we'd like to get you to do this show here at CNN. Uh, would you, uh, you know, we have a kind of, I don't want to say it's a dress code, <laughs> but we have like yeah, uh, a yeah. little. Uh, say no more, my friend. I know how this goes. And they ruined the only thing good about him. Yeah. He had a good but look. I just, but I imagine him going, yeah, no problem. Yeah, no, of course. He's like, nah, no problem. No problem. I'm cutting all this stuff off. So, yeah, so that was the, what cracked me up. I said, because I kept looking at him. I said, that name's familiar. And I kept looking at him, but I couldn't recognize him without all the shit on but his why face. But why do you bring this up? I don't know. I thought, I think he's going to, I think he's going to actually. CNN is going bump, out of business. I think he's going to bump Morgan. <clears throat> no, 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 no. Not at all. I yes, would. Yesterday, I'm, so I'm here, I'm home alone. Yeah, the, the cable box in the studio is on the fritz. So. I'm like I'm going to turn on just some CNN in the living room while I'm you know cooking a little dinner for myself. I'm doing some research, and they've got like documentaries, and and they have uh, who's the girl who was in the morning show who got uh, kicked off? Um, Aaron. No, 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 no. The the girl we you know, the, we know the she got she had to leave. Oh, uh, Erica. No, she's long gone. Not Erica. No, not, not Erica Hill. No. The, the, Who do we know? The girl. Oh. Soledad. Oh, no, Soledad. Was it, was it Soledad? Yeah, yeah. She got yeah. kicked into uh, yeah. into cable TV, uh, no, HBO sports reporting. No, no, no. But she, she, she still gets to do her specials. Right. So her that special is. was on last night, and she's – I should have recorded it. And she's interviewing a child molester in jail. And, you know, and, and she's so horrible. I'm like, this Zucker is – she's ruining – CNN was already lame. But now it's, it's not even watchable. It's just, I want some news. Just, you know, show me a shot of Tahrir, Tahrir Square or show me, you know, something. Just have some webcams active. But, but this, is a, this is the hole that is so large and gaping in television news. It, 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 someone's going to come in and take over the spot. And hello, RT. Yeah, RT, they haven't got the, the balls to do anything right. All we right. have the exact right idea, but... Never gonna. We're never gonna get hired. We we don't want to do a show on the RT. No. We just want to fix the RT. No, no. I'd love to fix it because I the auditions would be so much fun. Oh, the auditions would be worth the price of it. They <laughs> we could charge people to come to the auditions. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll have a um, uh, a paywall website. Yes. So you can watch showing the, aud the auditions. <laughs> showing the auditions. In fact, I think we could do a pay per view special. 
of you and I doing the audition. <laughs> I'd pay. Yeah, I, I know I would. All right, my friend, way too long once again. We're giving people more value than they contributed, but there you go. We'll put some in the Karma Bank. Hopefully we'll get some of that back on Thursday. So, uh, missions, what are you going to be doing? I'm going to go up to the Petaluma and uh, do a show, and then I'm going to come back and try to find out the origin of the Bertha Foundation. Good. I'm going to be just all over the Bertha Foundation. That's, I'm, I'm obs- I have to say, I'm a little obsessed. I, I was actually, uh, so I was doing this uh, Friday night even, I was yelling at my computer going, I'll get you, Bertha Foundation. I'll find out who you are. You know, it may not be doable on the computer. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for uh, tuning in. Thank you for support of uh, the program, of the work you do. Uh, I am your pasta turophile. And I am here in the Travis Heights hideout in the capital of the Drone Star State, Austin, Texas. In the morning, I'm Adam Curry. And from northern Silicon Valley, (laughs) I'm John C. Dvorak. (laughs) We'll be back on Thursday. Remember, Dvorak.org slash N.A. See you then, right here for No Agenda. The best podcast in the universe. Shut up, slave. Dvorak.org slash N-A.